Is everything okay in Oklahoma? We'll soon find out. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> uh, they have fans here in Norman anticipating what's going to happen after the Sooners coming off what was an uncharacteristic season as Oklahoma takes on West Virginia. Uncharacteristic, they had seven wins. Well, you know, normally when you go seven and four, people are very happy. However, not down in Norman, Oklahoma. That was like a, a disaster. People are looking forward to what's going to happen this year. Barry Switzer needs 10 wins to have the first 100-game winning season by a coach in his first 10 years of coaching. So it'll be interesting to see what happens well, with them. the Oklahoma fans are believe they're coming back with a great team. Maybe the one that could contend for a national championship. I think one thing we look for and one thing West Virginia has to worry about, can they stop that very exciting wishbone attack? Led the nation last year in rushing even though they lost four football games. Normally, Oklahoma stops itself with the wishbone. They do fumble a lot. West Virginia plays excellent defense under Don Nealon, and I'm just looking forward to a great go. Well, they say this is the year of the running back with Herschel Walker and company around the country in college football, but here today, this game might be one of the linebackers. Four linebackers in the football game, two for Oklahoma, Ship and Benson. A lot of people think they are the best combo in the nation. On the other side of the coin, though, folks and Tally are excellent, considered the best in the East. They'll get after people. If they stay within the boundaries, they're going to find them. All right, a great Oklahoma defense, so the key for West Virginia, can Jeff Hostetler, a transfer from Penn State, coming in to take over for the great Oliver Luck, get some time to pass. And Irv, there's always that thing about the heat. Well, the heat is very definitely a factor. It's windy. It is warm here. It's, uh, it's going to be a factor, as we pointed out. Could be 100 degrees right here on the field at Owen Field in Norman for this football game. West Virginia coached by Don Nealon, who left his alma mater, Bowling Green, and in two short years it turned around a program that was dormant. Last year, the Mountaineers came back to win a very important victory in the bowl game, and they come in here with a 26-6 victory over Florida in the Peach Bowl, trying to challenge one of the mighty teams of college football year in, year out. The University of Oklahoma Sooners, who are coached by the great Barry Switzer, America's winningest coach, 90 victories in his first nine years. Oklahoma suffered somewhat of a down year last year for them, winning seven and losing four. The starting lineups as Oklahoma will receive, starting for the Sooners today on the offense. And this will be an inexperienced offensive line that will start for Oklahoma. They'll have a great uh, backfield, but inexperienced along the front line. But look out for Paul Parker at left guard and Elbert Graham at left tackle. They may be the ones they'll count on. In the backfield, it's another story. It's a veteran backfield led by Stanley Wilson, the All-American candidate, and Kelly Phelps at quarterback, a solid player in chip winners, and Weldon Letterbrothers taking over at fullback. West Virginia's defense has been one of the strong points for the Mountaineers. We'll get to that in a moment. Now to kick off for West Virginia's Paul Woodside, Jerome Ledbetter and Stanley Wilson are waiting at the goal line for Oklahoma. That is Wilson on your right, Ledbetter on the left. And they're going toward Letter back, backing into his end zone will not be returned as Woodside puts the ball past the end zone and Oklahoma will start from its own 20 yard line to begin the ball game and the 1982 season is underway for Oklahoma a team that many feel may be knocking for a national title before it's over for West Virginia their starting lineup today offensive line include Hoisington leg Johnson Gist Kell Rouse their all-american candidate at tight end and Hollins will be at split in this also is an experience the backfield Hostetler takes over for the great Oliver Luck at quarterback he comes from Penn State and he may be the key now the first play of the game Kelly Phelps and the wishbone attack and back it goes to Wilson looking to the outside turns the corner for just a short game Stanley Wilson gets maybe to about the 22 or 23 West Virginia defense features a three man line and four linebackers their strength is in the linebackers although they have a great tackle and uh, Todd Campbell number 91 but Daryl Talley Mr. Outside and Dennis Folks number 50 Mr. Inside the linebackers are the boys Steve Newberry heads up the defensive backs he set a freshman record with six interceptions at 1980 and Irv looks like we got the first flag of the game. Well you know they've stopped action because Stanley Wilson was hurt. That's Vance Carlson. I don't think we've got a flag. The action was stopped because as we pointed out Wilson on the toss sweep uh, was shaken up. He'll be back in there. So kind of interesting Jim West Virginia wins the uh, toss. There's a look at the game official and they choose to defend the uh, South goal so they want the win. 
Steve Sewell, a sophomore, has replaced Stanley Wilson, left half back now in the wishbone on a one wide receiver. That's Cloyce. Here's the fake, the first man. They give it now to here comes Sewell, breaking through in the clear of the 50. He might go all the way. Sewell who just came off the bench, out of bounds in the 32. And there's the explosion aspect of the wishbone of Oklahoma. Well, they are so exciting. That fullback starts off by hitting off the outside hip of the guard. And then there's so many things that can happen. You either pitch the football, the second man through, in this case, Sewell, who took the place of Wilson, and he leaves now. And listen to this crowd, Jim, as Sewell is leaving, as he puts the Sooners in great position right away. Wilson is back in the lineup. 46-yard run by Steve Sewell, a 200-pound sophomore from San Francisco, California. Last year, averaged almost seven yards a carry. Didn't hurt that a bit. Fullback hits the middle. And here's Ledbetter stacked up inside the 30-yard line. But already, Oklahoma is knocking at the door here against West Virginia. 43, Weldon Ledbetter had an outstanding game here a couple of years ago when Stanley Wilson was injured at fullback, and he came off the bench against North Carolina. Dennis Folks made the stop. You'll hear that name a lot. He's Mr. Inside. It comes out of the same mold as Sam Huff and Chuck Halley at West Virginia. So call it uh, second down here and about six yards to go from the West Virginia 27 yard line. Now Kelly fakes again to his fullback. Hands off to Wilson, who's punched hard and spun down the 25 yard line. They don't give him much. So Wilson, who asked to be moved this year from fullback to tailback. He could be a candidate for the Heisman Trophy. Certainly he's in line for All-America honors. Second man through, 5-2 defense. And notice how the linebackers are very active. They get over and get involved with the play. Finally, uh, uh, the uh, crowning blow for number uh, for West Virginia, that is number 44, Tim Agee. This is a little guy, Jimmy, but he'll knock your head off just about 5'7", but he likes it tough. Tim Agee, 175 pass from Bethesda, Maryland. Oh, it's third down, a key play here for Oklahoma. Need a couple of yards, and here's the keep of the quarterback, Phelps, spinning outside. But here's the pitch going wide to Wilson at the 15, the 10, and driven over the sidelines. First down for Oklahoma. That's the, uh, the way they run the uh, option down here. They carry the ball in one hand, Jim. It's a little more of a high risk, but you turn the corner a little quicker. Kelly Phelps is a great athlete who can run. If he can stay healthy, He'll help this ball club. Watch him turn the corner. Now, this is a guy with 4-4 speed. He gets the ball out to winners. This is just a very tough competitor. He'll stick you. So Oklahoma in great shape down at the nine-yard line. First and goal to go for Oklahoma. The Sooners, who perennially have been a power in college football since Bud Wilkinson began this dynasty here about 30 years ago. Now they got a slot back set up on the right side. The fullback's got it. There goes Net better spinning inside the five. Weldon Ledbetter stopped at about the four yard line by the center of the West Virginia defense. Number 43. Ledbetter thus far has uh, picked up 10 yards on two carries, so that's a pretty healthy average. Got a good block from 62, Paul Parker. This is the veteran who moved over from the tackle. He just gets a little influence there as they run that wishbone so effectively. You got to have a good fullback game if you're going to run the wishbone. And Barry Switzer does have that. Timeout for West Virginia. They want to talk it over. They're in trouble right here. And his trouble, of course, is wearing the maroon, uh, the crimson and gold of Oklahoma as the Sooners have it inside the Mountaineer five, second and goal. Barry Switzer would like to see his team get very quickly in the end zone here, get things started. He uh, of course, had what was a rugged year for him a year ago, and his team lost four times. West Virginia coach Don Nealon took his team to a bowl game, took a little bit of a calculated risk today, choosing the win to give, Notre Dame, uh, to give Oklahoma the ball, and Oklahoma's come right downfield with it. Second down and five to go. Full back, let better to the goal line, touchdown. Penalty flag is down. A penalty marker down. Let better got it over the stride, but wait, let's see if it's going to be called back. There is the signal. Offsides against West Virginia decline. Oklahoma touchdown. The Sooners have drawn blood in three minutes and 32 seconds. Made it look very easy. Sewell set it up, and then they get the TD down here behind Williams and Burke. They just did an excellent job straight ahead blocking. So OU draws first blood, and that was a very impressive drive right out of the chute. You know, Jim, uh, I guess you can kind of wonder about kicking off to Oklahoma 
and let them have that momentum because they are so tough down here in Norman, but that's what Don Nealon chooses to do today, and his ball club is now down seven. Michael Keeling kicks the point, and Oklahoma has the first seven points of the ball game, and the Sooner Schooners on the field to the roar of the fans of Norman, 75,000 strong as their team leads. Now the look at the scoring play, Oklahoma from the four yard line of West Virginia. All they do is just block down with Burks and Steve Williams, Dr. Death and Ledbetter showing good drive, spins into the end zone. That is their basic play, he hits off the outside hip of the guard. You gotta make that play go if you're gonna make the wishbone effective. So far Irv, Oklahoma's power has been straight up the middle right at West Virginia. Only once have we seen the wide option run and that was successful for a pretty good game. You know now Barry Michael Switzer Keeling. will do that. He'll uh, soften you up a little bit and then when you least expect it he'll go outside. Keeling now on the kickoff. Here's the return. Willie Drury up the sidelines. Good return over the 30 to maybe the 33 yard line in West Virginia. Comes up with pretty good field position as the Mountaineers send their offense on the field for the first time in this game and now trailing 7 0. And all eyes will be on Jeff Hostetler. There's the scoring drive. It took the Sooners just seven plays to go the 80 yards. Hostetler, number 15, a junior, takes over quarterback. There's the line he'll have in front of him. It's inexperienced, with one exception, rally tight him. But Hostetler will have Brown, Zop, and Walzak. Walzak and Zop, the running backs behind him. They give it to Walzak, tries the right side, nothing doing. Walzak is smothered by the Crimson uh, jerseys of Oklahoma. Defensive line for Oklahoma includes the great Rick Bryan, who may be a candidate for the Outland candidate for 1982. And he was helped leading that charge. There's Bryan, number 80. He'll team with Slater at guards. Murphy and Troy at the ends. Blake will be the middle guard. And uh, Slater was the one who got that tackle. We'll get the linebackers and the other backs for you in a moment. It's second down. Still 10 yards to go. And immediately the air goes Hostetler. Good protection. Fires off the flat out of the backfield. Here comes Walzak trying to get outside the left with no running room to uh, talk about. He stopped around the 37 and 38. Maybe a four or five yard gain. And that error of bat, I think, is what West Virginia must do today. They are going to throw the football a lot. Mickey Walzak uh, is a very effective pass receiver. Let's take a look at a potential All-American. This is Brian, the big tackle, plays on the left side, and this guy is something else. A lot of people think that he's every bit as good as a fellow by the name of Jim Weatherall who wasn't bad here. You notice they're going to double-team him all day long. Third down for West Virginia, about five yards to go, dropping straight back is Hofstetter. Got a man wide open, but his walls like a gamble the first down, over the 45. Well, maybe if there should be a soft spot in the Oklahoma team, and there may not be, but if it is, it possibly could be their pass defense. Well, I think that that is very true. People feel that you can throw in Oklahoma. It's tough to run against them. We've got somebody down for West Virginia on the field, and while they're attending to him, we'll bring you up to date. It is seven to nothing in favor of the Sooners as they took that first kickoff, and uh, Sewell had the long home run, 46 yards, set up the lead better touchdown. And Jim, you point out that uh, West Virginia will throw. A lot of people think that Hostetler has more potential as a passer than Oliver Luck. Now, that's some uh, very uh, big words because Oliver Luck was something else. I got to see this kid. Well, over 5,700 yards he threw for, and he's now the backup quarterback for the Houston Oilers. So Oliver Luck was one of the great quarterbacks of all time for West Virginia. He was lost last year from the uh, team that lost nine. Andre Gist is the shaken up player of the right guard. Well, we'll have more football coming for you throughout the season on September 19th, a week away, a first ESPN telecast. Michigan will be at Notre Dame the Sunday, September 19th. Alabama, Mississippi, and Arizona State at Houston. Now, there are some games. You'll see Michigan's Anthony Carter for one, and boy, can he play. Yeah, I guarantee he can get after it just a little bit. Uh, I saw him last year against Purdue, and the guy was just something else. He's got great speed. He can just do it. We still have gifts down on the uh, field, Jim. This guy's had so many injuries. He's overcome a lot of injuries, and once again, he's down in the first period of the uh, first game of the year. They switched him from defense, and he's had a nagging neck injury. has been his biggest problem. Scott Burrows is, uh, Burrows has come on the field, a sophomore from Marietta, Ohio, 245-pounder. Here's the magnificent Owen Field Stadium, now 75,000, and it's jammed to capacity here on a day perfect for football, if you can have it, although it's a little bit hot this time of the year. Anything under 100 degrees is going to be uh, not too awfully hot. There are the returning Letterman 
Oklahoma with 50, and they're looking forward to a great year. West Virginia brings 14 starters back from the squad that won the Peach Bowl last year, upsetting Florida. Now West Virginia's set to go. They made the change. Guest is out. Barrows is in at right guard. It's still Hostetler with Walzak and Zop behind him in the backfield. In a passing formation, now in motion comes Gary Mullen. Hostetler sending to the right side. Here goes King Harvey on a sweep. Cannot turn the corner. For more than about uh, two or three yards. Just over the 50 and stopped on the Oklahoma 47. Harvey is a sophomore, but a very electrifying runner. They think that he may have more explosive speed than either Walzak or Curlin Beck, who's listed as the number two tailback. He looks good on film, and in his first effort, he picked up decent yardage, and that's what you got to do against Oklahoma's counter a little bit. Don Nealon is aware of this. This guy got his roots in the Midwest under Bo Schembechler. He knows what to do. He's an excellent coach. Hollins to the left side. Wayne Brown has been replaced by Mullen, who comes in motion. Again, they go misdirection, and here's a halfback pass downfield and intended for Rao incomplete. They were trying to get Walzak on a halfback pass to the tight end Rao, and... We had expected a lot of trick uh, plays here today by West Virginia to try to offset the great edge and manpower held by Oklahoma. There's the first tip off. Well, what a job Benson did holding up the uh, tight end. But we're going to take another look at Brian because this guy fights to the outside. He's taken on number 71, Kurt Kell. And this is just an excellent football player. He gives you 110 percent the minute he hits the field. Notice he's in the passer's face. That's one of the reasons the pass wasn't complete. Plus Benson just destroyed Rao. Did a great job holding him up. So it's third down, about four to go now. The Oklahoma 47. Hostetler back over the middle. Got a man open, and Walzak cannot hold it. Would have had a first down around the 40-yard line and might have picked up another five yards. Could have been thrown just a little bit low and maybe slightly behind him, but Walzak was there. Jimmy, what a, a play, though. What a call by Don Nealon because they picked up the stunt. Hayworth was coming on a safety blitz. They had the right man, and unfortunately, it just couldn't connect. Walzak dropped it, but that could have been six. It was an excellent call by West Virginia. They're forced into a punting situation. Greg Robertson is on, and, and only Scott Case now is going to be back to return. Here's Robertson, a sophomore from South Charleston. Gets off the punt fair. Catch call by Case. Let's it go over his head, and it will go into the end zone. West Virginia had great coverage downfield, about eight or ten men under the ball, but could not reach Robertson's long, towering punt. So into the end zone for the automatic touchback. Oklahoma will start again from the 20. That's where they began a moment some more, and from there they scored. It is now 7-0 as the Sooners get the ball again. All right, first and 10, Oklahoma. Here's the option run. Kelly Phelps pitches out wide, fumble, but out of bounds. That was intended for Chet Winters. Oklahoma leads the nation almost annually in rushing figures. They also lead it in fumbles. Last year, for example, they put the ball on the ground and lost it 52 times. That's average of over once a quarter. And it comes because of the way Oklahoma plays the wishbone option play. The quarterbacks carry the ball in one hand. It gives them great mobility and agility and more speed getting to the corner quicker. But it's also dangerous. It's also a very good formation to run into the boundary, which is what they did that time. And uh, Barry Switzer's breaking the bone more than I've seen him this year. Uh, here's a gift to the fullback. And tripped up is Ledbetter. And his momentum gets him over the 25 and for a pretty good gain out around the 26 27 yard line got another injury Jimmy is uh, this is one of those ball games where it is warm and people are getting nicked up early an Oklahoma guy is down at the 20 yard line one of the key things if you're playing defense against the Sooners is to try and pick up the angle of the fullback because it's not true triple option and that's one of the things that Don Nealon has worked very hard at there's a look at the Mountaineer bench is there uh, they're in there, a dogfight. Norman, Oklahoma, anytime you come in. All right, we've got a uh, momentary timeout here with Oklahoma leading 7 0. The Sooners will be facing a third down. And we'll remind you that the first ESPN telecast of coming of this telecast from the Olympic Auditorium in Los Angeles, that'll be Saturday night fights on September 18th, matches Raphael Bazooka Lyman and Chung Yul Choi. I hope I said that right. Well, they'll, they'll never know anymore. if you didn't. <laughs> okay, well, be sure and uh, join our men, Sal Marshall and Al Bernstein, who will bring you ESPN's big time boxing. Lyman, by the way, is rated number one by the WBC, so that'll be a big battle on September 18th right here on ESPN. Albert Graham is the injured player. Looks like he'll be back, too, as they help him off. 
And the Sooners have made a substitution. Uh, 67, Rocky Hubble is in the ballgame. Beg your pardon, make that 69, Brent Burks. Now well, here's the option run again by Kelly, and he is backed hard. Did you get the first down? He made a great Kelly second Phelps. effort. Kelly Phelps, who was running the option, had the trailing halfback Chet Winters, kept the ball, and looked for those markers to make the first down. Let's see if he made it. Watch the way he carries the mail. This is the man with 4-4 speed. He can run, and you got to be a runner if you want to play the wishbone. This is counter option. 44 age, he comes down. This is his assignment. He makes the play. As you pointed out, Jim, he's got the ball in one hand and the left hand. Picks up uh, good yardage. They'll go for it. No, nope, they will nope. not. I beg your pardon. Did not make the first down, and Keeling is in the punt. Missed by just inches. Waiting back for West Virginia now is Willie Drury, and we're going to get a timeout. Barry Switzer's just adamant because they don't have enough people, and he jumped on the field, signaled to his players to call timeout, and that's what happens in your opener. Normally, uh, there's a ton of mistakes. I saw Missouri play Colorado State last week. And between the two teams, they fumbled 17 times. There's Barry Switzer. All he wants to know, Jimmy, when he comes out on the field is, are they in a eight or nine man front? And he's gonna attack you that way. Or a seven man front, whatever they're doing, he'll have the answers. Well, in nine years, this uh, young man from Clawson, Arkansas has coached Oklahoma here to 90 victories. I don't know if a coach ever has won 90 games in nine years before. And he has a chance, as we uh, pointed out at the top, to win 100 in his first 10 years, which would be a record. Here's a good punt. Certainly not his first nine. Moving back is Drury. Takes it over the 30, hit the 35, down on the 36. So Willie Drury, a sophomore, returns for West Virginia to the 36-yard line. The Mountaineers will get back to football, still trailing 7-0. We have 9 minutes and 14 seconds to go in the first quarter. Jimmy, they got some wood chopped, though, during that exchange because they did dig in and hold. I was impressed with their passing game the first time they got the football. Well, we got a penalty flag, too. I think Oklahoma will get back to football. Penalty marker was dropped on the play, and... There's been a, being quite a discussion on the field. Referee Vance Carlson now with some of the other officials. There's the signal. A foul is against West Virginia. Double foul, and the ball will come back, and Oklahoma will have uh, the football back in possession. So it will not go to West Virginia. A Mountaineers penalty is very costly. Oklahoma football, they're leading 7-0. Boy, you pointed out, Jim, you just can't come in here because very few teams come in and win anyway and have a mistake after you stop them. The good job by A.G. on the option. So now the uh, Mountaineer defense has to come back on the field. My point out, uh, it is warm. There are fans on the field. They are putting big ice uh, blocks down there. There's uh, Vance Carlson, the veteran official. Holding, uh, they were trying to hold up some of the Oklahoma linemen. There was also clipping against West Virginia on the play. Blocking from behind on the return coverage. So it's Oklahoma's ball first and 10 at the 40. So that's a break for the Sooners. There's the breakdown of uh, Oklahoma. And by the way, those 17 freshmen are being redshirted. They give up the middle of fullback well, led better. And he cracks for maybe four or five yards close to the 45 yard line. You might have seen Phelps was really taken down hard that time by a shooting linebacker, but Ledbetter had taken the handoff. All right, this is Folks, and this guy is a good football player. Notice his stance and his technique. Gets up, makes the play. This is just one of the better football players in the country. They uh, talk a lot about him and Sam Huff. That wasn't too shabby a guy. Now, again, again, they give it upside and Ledbetter. Ledbetter first down down to West Virginia territory on the 40. Stopped on the, about the 40-yard line. And Weldon Ledbetter having a spectacular first quarter in uh, the game today against West Virginia. 37 yards for Ledbetter thus far in six carries. Beauty of the uh, wishbone, you start to widen now. There he breaks a tackle from Agee, and then that fullback just has a field day. They move Stanley Wilson to a halfback. They got a guy by the name of Freddie Sims who plays fullback every bit as good as what you see in the game now. It's still Wilson and Winters, the halfbacks, Ledbetter, the fullback. As Kelly Phelps sets him in motion, they give us off to winners, trying the right side to the 35. Oklahoma now just chewing up the yardage as they punish this West Virginia defense, moving now to the 35. Change their defense that time to an even set with uh, just the one linebacker, something we thought Don Nealon might do. That'll bring up second and about five. Oklahoma hasn't thrown yet. They don't throw very much, but the one thing about the wishbone, it gives you some excellent passing opportunities. When OU throws, normally uh, it's for the bomb and your percentage is so great uh, simply because people are coming up playing your man. 
Got a double wing now set up, and now here goes Winners in motion, and the gives to Ledbetter. Penalty flag is thrown. There might have been a motion penalty against Oklahoma on that play. Carried down around the 32, just short of the first down markers in West Virginia territory, but I think it'll be called back on a five-yard walk-off against Oklahoma. There's referee Vance Carlson, and let's watch the signal. Five yards will be against Oklahoma, so it'll be penalizing uh, the Sooners. And it is illegal motion, so it'll remain second down. And now 10 yards to go. Normally you would think this would be the option time, but I've seen Barry Switzer run the handback player, the second man through. You just can't ever uh, believe what you see with him because he'll mix them up. Well, that batter is tripped up this time, and that was a great play for West Virginia. Tripped up inside, I believe. See if it was Harris. But Ledbetter that time will stop for one of the rare times in the first quarter here today. It'll be third down, almost 10 yards to go. This is a look at uh, 76, Je uh, Steve Williams, that is. This is Dr. Death, the professional wrestler in the summer. Had an opportunity to coach his brother. He's from Lakewood, Colorado. He'll uh, use that wrestling ability here just a little bit. Well, it's his friend, and he says, just a minute, folks. Hold on. That's uh, Steve, Dr. Death. A little pushing around on Steve, folks. Here's the first pass. The game is complete. Down to 30. That is winners. He has the first down inside the 20-yard line and is taken down hard around the 22. Oklahoma to the rear. Rarely goes the air, but this time it is successful. One and very fancy, Jim. All he did is run a little sprint out, and A.G. Uh, isn't able to bring down Winters. Winters is a hard running back. There's no breakaway or tearaway jerseys right here, but he doesn't need them. He keeps his balance. This is a tough kid. I really like the way he runs. A very complete player. And once again, somebody is down for West Virginia. Jimmy, that's the problem when you play a powerhouse like Oklahoma. It's all you can do to win anyway, but if you walk out of here with injuries, then you're in serious trouble for your next nine games. Well, coming up, more top-ranked boxing on ESPN. September 16th from the Sands Hotel in Atlantic City. We'll have James Broad, uh, who has five KOs, and he's undefeated through eight fights against Eddie Mack of Philadelphia. He's won 15 of his 22 bats, seven by KO. Sam Rosen and Randy Gordon will be there. That'll be Thursday, September 16th at 8.30 p.m. Eastern Time, 5.30 Pacific on ESPN. Bad Here. news, Jim. The best down lineman for West Virginia just limped off, and it, it really didn't look good. Putting no weight on the right leg at all is Todd Campbell. This is the All-American candidate, 6'2", 270, a senior, one of the better football players not only in the East but in the country. Well, he was the MVP of the uh, Peach Bowl for Lyman last week. Now they give it again to Ledbetter on the slant to the right side to the 16-yard line, maybe the 15 on the motion. Phelps has really used Ledbetter. That's about the eighth time that he's carried the ball today. He's up around 40 yards so far. And they have certainly uh, liked the spot they found in the middle of the West Virginia line. And it's thus far paid off for Barry Switzer. Of course, he'll have uh, plenty of competition this year in the Big Eight. Nebraska, another great team. Missouri usually strong. Oklahoma State better than uh, normal was say. Now they give it again to Ledbetter. Lining the left side inside the 10 and dives to the 7. Weldon Ledbetter has been the man so far for Oklahoma. The big fullback, 218 pounder from St. Louis with another big game. Watch Parker and Brooks off the left side. You talk about people getting the job done. This is the third string center, Ferrer in the middle. All of them get their man, do the job. You got to secure the linebacker, number one out of the uh, wishbone, and they get it done. Here's the West Virginia bench. Don Nealon has done an incredible job there. 500 his first year. Took him to the Peach Bowl last year. He comes out of the tough Mid-American Conference. Well, he played for a great coach, George Perry. Now the option by Phelps, and a fumble, and a scramble. I think Phelps got it back. Kelly Phelps tried to pitch it at the last moment of Stanley Wilson. Ball got knocked down, and Phelps is able to cover it. Jimmy, you pointed out earlier that they do like to carry the ball with one hand so you get more uh, things going. Here he is with one hand. Phelps can run. He turns it upfield, but he doesn't have uh, the handle on it. Loses it, but notice who gets the fumble. Phelps just scrambles uh, like a wild man here. He wants to keep that job. Well, that was Darrell Talley who called Mr. Outside who had a momentary chance for it for West Virginia. It is second down and 10 to go. Led better to the six. Weldon Ledbetter tracking hard on a slant just to the left side right behind Paul Parker who may be Oklahoma's best offensive lineman gave him another solid block 
did the junior from Tulsa and it'll be third down and about uh, six yards to go from the West Virginia six. Parker was a defensive lineman as a freshman. You know, he's lost 40 pounds a year ago so that he's able to compete. He's got great strength and one of the things that really helped him, he was a wrestler in high school, a heavyweight champ to be exact and that ba uh, body balance really helps him in uh, firing off the line of scrimmage. Now they got Wilson in motion and rolling now is Phelps looking for the end zone. Phelps running. He might score. He does. Touchdown for Kelly Phelps. What looked like was an option pass or run turned out to be a run indeed by Kelly Phelps. Kelly Phelps got forced back a little deeper than he would like to to throw this football but he still is able to turn the corner It's 97 for West Virginia loss contained that's Rich Walters and Phelps uh, pays the price at the end as he takes a pretty good shot from Greg McGowan the strong safety. And now is Michael Keeling to try for the 14th point for Oklahoma Danny Bradley will hold at the 10 snap and he's got it and Oklahoma with four minutes and 22 seconds to go and the first period from Norman has opened up a 14 point lead over the West Virginia Mountaineers. Coming Saturday September 18th will be more Canadian Football League action Winnipeg versus Ottawa Winnipeg rides the arm of Dieter Brock that's the former Jacksonville State star and uh, Ottawa having made it to the Great Cup uh, last season is not off to a very good start this year but they still have uh, players like uh, first year pro Chris Isaac who can also provide some fireworks from quarterback that'll be from Lansdowne Park and they got a little more territory to cover up there yeah, absolutely plus everybody can go in motion I love the game. <laughs> Well Oklahoma has been in motion here today at uh, this game in Norman Oklahoma at Owen Field 14 points the first quarter most of it along the ground they had one electrifying run by Steve Sewell of about 40 yards plus you'll notice now that the kicker Michael Keeling kicks off barefoot but he punts with a shoe it takes all kinds now back deep you better Billy wear Curry. a stocking when he goes to Manhattan in Boulder Colorado late in November. <laughs> Kevin White and Willie Drewer are back deep. It's going to go to the freshman. Nope. Willie Drewer takes it on the six. Drewer the 15. 20. Looking for a block. Looking for the sidelines. Spun over about the 32. Not a bad return by Drewer to the 32 yard line. And he was taken out of bounds by Scott Case of Oklahoma. Well, what a job they do with their special teams from West Virginia. That's the second fine wall they've set up. So they get the ball back for the second time. That penalty really hurt them, Jim. There's the story on the scoring drive, but that penalty on the fourth down punt, unable to uh, let West Virginia have the football. And then, of course, Phelps takes it in. So the Sooners lead 14 0. We've got 417 left from Norman, Oklahoma in the first period. Twice the Sooners have driven 80 yards, six of plays the first time, 13 plays that time. Hosteller out of the eye, dropping straight back, fires it off to his tail back, and here's Wall Jack, hit at the line of scrimmage and spins forward for maybe a yard. Great coverage by Oklahoma. Over there was Carl Peters. Looked like it came up from his left cornerback spot. He's replaced Daryl Sanji. Gain of about a yard, second down and nine. West Virginia on their 31 and a half yard line. West Virginia last year won nine football games. They lost to Pitt State. Penn State, they lost to Pittsburgh, they lost to Syracuse, but they upset Florida in the Peach Bowl 26 16. Wayne Brown wide the left. Again, play action fake by Hosta. Going down to Wade Brown in the long one. Broken up at the 40 yard line of Oklahoma, intended for Brown. Had a great coverage back here by Keith Stanberry, the strong safety. We got a great shot of this, Jim, because this is defensive secondary play at its best. This is a straight zone, each has uh, half of the field. And this is uh, uh, Stanberry, number 19, coming over, making the play. Thought he had a chance to intercept it, but Oklahoma plays mostly zone. Occasionally, they'll go man-to-man -man when they stunt. So far, Hostiller's hit three out of six for 14 yards. That's the first time he's really gone for the long bomb. Again, he's got Brown wide for the left side. Holland split out on the right. Almost bobbled it. Hostiller being chased. Runs out of the pocket. Hostiller running, cut down. Great pressure by Oklahoma. That was Thomas Benson, the great linebacker, number 38, who got Hostetler. And Slater's the guy who really put the pressure on, forced him over, and then Kevin Murphy came over, and as you mentioned, Benson getting the job done. Let's take another look. Watch Slater out of the right tackle spot as he really comes in with a nice knifing effort right there, forces him out of the pocket. Murphy comes over. Hostetler can run a little bit, but not this time. Got to punt the football. 
Greg Robertson in the punt for West Virginia again. And Oklahoma will get it in good field position. Coming over is Scott Case, watches it go out of bounds at the 30. That was a nice job by Robertson, preventing any run back. And Oklahoma will start this time from its own 30 after two 80 yard marches. The Sooners have scored each time they have the ball. This time they'll take over in the 29, and they'll be 71 yards away with two minutes and 57 seconds to go in the first uh, third. Those games played between West Virginia and Oklahoma were very lopsided affairs. As a matter of fact, the last time they played was here in 1978. At Oklahoma on 52 to 10. That was the opening game for West Virginia, not the opening game for Oklahoma, however. That was the year they played Stanford in the opening game, and the great John Elway was a freshman. New quarterback is in. And off for Oklahoma. There goes Sims. Fred Sims hit uh, hard. The ball got away after the whistle, but Rod Pegues, who's a very fast runner, is now relieved. Kelly Phelps, the quarterback. Pegues is a senior. From Gainesville, Texas, maybe the best scrambling quarterback on the Oklahoma staff. Well, Barry Switzer's really gone to the bench. You point out about Pegues, they've also got Steve Sewell, Alvin Ross, and Jerome Ledbetter in the, in the lineup. That would be uh, for, well, they give him a gain of a couple of yards to the 31 on the forward motion. And it is second down and eight to go. Fullback now is Fred Sims. They fake to Sims. They give it off instead to Ross and fumble. And let's see, West Virginia may have it this time. Nope, Oklahoma's ball. Recovered by Oklahoma at the 44. And that'll be a recovery for a first down. But that was a good run. I think he picked up the first down before the fumble. Let's take a look at the center. This is the third stringer's force to start today. Paul Fair, number 55 who's doing a job on Dave Oblack. He does a good job. That's not uh, easy to take on a very physical guy like Oblack and Fair didn't expect to play this year. All of a sudden he starts the first game of 1982. Ninth first down of the quarter for Oklahoma at their 44. Sooners lead 14 nothing and driving again. Now here's the handoff for, to Ledbetter. Sims I'm sorry Fred Sims the fullback. He's still in there. Gets it over the 50 down to the 49. Great block by Steve Williams. Let's take a look at Dr. Death out of Lakewood, Colorado. He'll just come over. He uh, gets on the pile, jumps up a little bit. This guy, they love him down here. He's the heavyweight wrestler. He also picked up 800 bucks a week wrestling in the summer. It's perfectly legal. You can be a pro in one sport and an amateur in another. They love Steve Williams. Now a little bit of a trap play look back for Steve Sewell. Remember Sewell made the great run back early in the game that got Oklahoma off and running when he came in for a shaken up Stanley Wilson. This time Sewell goes to the 44 and that'll be another first down for Oklahoma. First down number 10. 51 yards and two carries now for Sewell who broke 46 the longest play of the game thus far and Oklahoma has been moving ever since. One minute to go in the first quarter. Fake, no, I'll give to the fullback, and Sims uh, will get a couple of three yards before he is stacked up inside the West Virginia 40. 97 for the Mountaineers is Rich Walter. He's replaced Todd Campbell. Well, Campbell remains out of the lineup. Also got a good job from 38, Dave Preston, the inside linebacker. That's so important. You point out that Wallers has to, uh, has replaced Campbell. Campbell is such a strong guy. Now Wallers is being called on to stop that handback play. That's the second man through. They do a good job with it. Jim Merritt's now has come in for West Virginia. 20 seconds to go. This might be the last play of the first quarter. And the fullback hitting the middle, Sims, will get very, very little. It'll be a third down coming up for Oklahoma. That might be the final play of the quarter. Barry Switzer's team leading by a couple of touchdowns. We get down the final five seconds of this period. That play didn't have a lot of timing, and uh, the nose guard, Jimmy Merritt, did an excellent job for West Virginia. Mountaineers are down 14-0 at the end of uh, the first period. That is the end of the first period. That it is, Herb, and Oklahoma has the lead. 14-0 over West Virginia. And you see in the background some of the beautiful campus here, the University of Oklahoma, just a short drive from Oklahoma City at Norman, and part of the crowd of 75,000 on hand to usher in the 1982 season for the Sooners, who expect to do great things in this football season. They have a 14-0 lead over West Virginia after the first period. 
Now Oklahoma will uh, play Kentucky next week. Then they got an easy one at home, Southern California. They'll play Texas down in Dallas on the ninth. Of course, uh, Nebraska is always a dandy. The 26th, that'll be at Lincoln this year. West Virginia season, you could sum it up. There's a story about the first quarter, but West Virginia has a rugged first six weeks, Jim, and not Neyland Fields if he can I, get it wait going. Wait a minute, Irv, look at this. West I Virginia, no yards rushing. Oklahoma 168. And we understand officially West Virginia is actually minus one. Wow, that's an awesome attack by uh, Oklahoma. Rod Pagese remains a quarterback and he's looking. No, oh, there's a pitch up the middle to Sewell. Sewell 30, 25 to the 21 yard line. Goes Steve Sewell, who now suddenly developing here is a potential superstar coming in future years, if not this year, for Oklahoma. Don't forget the name of Steve Sewell. Got the great size. He's 6'4", 200, a sophomore from San Francisco. Oklahoma recruits all over the uh, country. They just had that little Utah play in there, and uh, all of a sudden, Oklahoma is down at the 22-yard line with their second string backs. At 70 yards so far by Steve Sewell. Of course, he got 46 in one big play. Now Sims again, the fullback, cracks inside the 20, jarred a couple of times and hit down around the 22. Sims can play. He's out of Tucson, Arizona. They've been waiting for him to get the chores done. Of course, we'll see another guy sometime today, Marcus Dupree, out of Philadelphia, Mississippi, the most uh, highly recruited uh, running back in the country a year ago. All he is is the biggest, strongest, and fastest guy on this squad, so he doesn't even play much. Well, they say he may be another uh, great back that'll match the one in Georgia. And we're talking about Herschel Walker. Maybe even better, could you believe that? Now the pitch to Sewell on the sweep. Great stop by West Virginia. Nothing doing on that one. That was a super hit by the Mountaineers. Rich Walter, I think, made the play. Indeed, it was Rich Walters, and this is the guy who had to come in when Campbell went down. Walters is a good football player. You know, he just happens to play behind somebody who's pretty good himself. He's 6'1, 230, a junior from Glenshaw, Pennsylvania. Mountaineers have another guy down. This has become a very rugged affair. We're it's just Ed, into the second period. This is Ed Hughes, who plays the opposite side linebacker. He's bought from Darrell Talley. So West Virginia being banged around a little bit here by Oklahoma in the first half. The Sooners continue to lead 14-0. And as they look over Hughes, let's remind you of more football coming on September 19th on ESPN. Michigan, Notre Dame, uh, the Fighting Irish will try to come back against a rugged schedule from a disappointing season. And Alabama will be at Mississippi. Bear Bryant loaded this year. Look out for the Crimson Tide. They say this could be his year. He'll be going against Steve Sloan, one of his, his former old buddy. pupils, right? And Arizona State at Houston. Boy, Darrell Rogers got the Sun Devils going, doesn't he? He really does. We'll take a look at them later on, Jimmy. We've got him against Stanford. And of course, Houston under Bill Yeomans, and all Yeomans does is run the veer against everybody and anybody. He moves the ball against them all. There's Dupree, the guy we're yep. talking about. This guy can play. Talking to Barry, uh, uh, who is he going to redshirt, Dupree or Tillman? The other freshman says we're going to redshirt Tillman because Dupree doesn't have as good of practice habits, and Tillman does. Well, Dupree, <laughs> by the way, those 87 touchdowns uh, in high school by Dupree down in Mississippi broke Herschel Walker's high school national record and over 5,000 yards gain, and he's just a sensational player. We expect to see number 22. They're helping Hughes off the field, and West Virginia now will have to go to uh, probably Steve Hathaway to run the weak side outside linebacking post. Got to keep in mind too, Jim, even though Oklahoma's had it all their own way, West Virginia is a good defensive football team. You're just going against a ball club that led the nation, a, uh, the nation that is a year going rushing. Their only problem has been that they drop it. Well, it's third and seven. Here's a key play now for Pegues. Pegues rolling to his left. Pegues going to keep. Pegues and he will not make it. West Virginia defense suddenly closes down, led by Dennis Folks, Mr. Inside. Also helping out there was Chuck Harris. Harris and Campbell, who called Thunder and Lightning. Folks and Tally are Mr. Inside, Mr. Outside. Well, there you saw Folks and Harris teaming up. Come out of a double wing to put great pressure on immediately. This is Vegas as he tries to turn the corner. Looks like he's going to get it done. Harris comes over and makes an exceptional play as they uh, just do a very good job of taking care of the flanks. Well, this will be Michael Keeling now from the 24, 34 yard attempt. He once kicked one 53 yards in the Orange Bowl. So this one is off the side of his foot and didn't make it. It is wide to the left and does not go. And West Virginia will get the ball. It Looks like tipped. they got a block there. Number 50, Dennis Folks is the guy who got it done. All right, and so West Virginia for the first time stops Oklahoma, but the Sooners right on leading 14 zip.
Now West Virginia takes over the ball. Let's see if they can pick up some momentum after uh, blocking the field goal. Full back up the middle. Looked like might have been Ron Wolfley. Let's see if he's replaced uh, Cam Zop. Yep, it was Wolfley, a sophomore from Orchard Park, New York. He has a brother, plays for the Pittsburgh Steelers. Picks up a couple of tough yards at second down and eight. That's the scene here at uh, Memorial Stadium in Owen Field in Norman, Oklahoma. It's where there have been five national championship flags flying in uh, recent past years. Draw up the middle. Fullback Wolfley again. They run the quarterback draw trying to fake the pass, and he got some running room. Virginia he got an excellent block from Dave Johnson, probably the best blocker up front for West Virginia. Oklahoma plays basically that 5-2. This time they shifted into an even set. Bryan covered the guard, and he went with an outside rush. They ran inside of him. So West Virginia picks up decent yardage. They are about third and a short two for the first down. Now, why do you do third and two against Oklahoma? West Virginia, remember, has not had a first down. Jeff Hostetler brings his tight end route to the right side, goes back to the eye, sends his tail back for the first down. Running hard is uh, Mickey Wolzak and or Tom Gray. Nope. It'll be a first down on the 39. That was Harvey from the tailback. So Nealon really going to his bench. Jackie Ship, one of the outstanding Oklahoma linebackers, and Steve Hayworth teamed up to make the stop. But that's the first first down for West Virginia. That'll be 23 yards for Harvey in his third carry. So Harvey's the tailback, and Wolfie now is the fullback behind Hofstetter. Double fake. Hofstetter looking. Hofstetter down the middle. Incomplete. Might have taken a little too long to uh, release the ball. He has it. He had the man open. Good. We're going to take a look at the secondary again, Jim. As uh, an excellent fake by Hostetler to freeze the backers. Straight zone once again as they were in a 5-2 uh, with the end falling off on the left side. Here's the zone. They had somebody open deep, and you say, why don't they throw to him? Because he's going to his left. It's tough to plant that foot at 90 degrees and release it. Hostetler had an excellent fake. Showed you some very fast feet. Unfortunately, it's second and ten. Play just didn't go. Well, he was going to his prime receiver again, Mark Rao. Again, the run the draw. And this is the tailback draw this time. And running hard is King Harvey over the 40. Tripped up around the 43. It'll be a third down coming up now for West Virginia. And about six yards to go. That is the play that will slow down the pass rush. They've been very ineffective running the football except for the sprint draw on the right side and the straight draw. That looked good. West Virginia's got something going. The key for them is to get some possession time. They're still in this thing. They're down 14 to nothing. There's 10.54 remaining till the first half. Now Oklahoma dropped uh, seven men off the line of scrimmage expecting the pass here from Hofstetter. And there's the blitz and he got a man wide open and Harvey can't hold it. Harvey would have had a first down around the 50 yard line but you got to credit the Oklahoma rush that time. They were in a blitz and they were right in on Hofstetter and they rushed his pass. Brought the linebacker ship and the strong safety Stanberry. Once again Nealon had the right call. There's the backer coming. There's the safety. The right call man is wide open, and they've got to make those plays. That's not that difficult. Nealon had the right call, and they just didn't execute it. Harvey should have hung on. Robertson in the punt. He's going to be punting into the wind now, which is blowing at about 15 miles an hour, and almost block gets it away. Fair catch is called for and taken here by Oklahoma. Steve Hayworth, a free safety at about the 28-yard line. So Oklahoma gets the ball for the fourth time in this game. They scored the first two times. A field goal try the next time failed. And now it's Sooners ball again with 10.37 to go in the first half of the Oklahoma leading 14-0. Fans uh, really spur them on down here. It's a great home field advantage. One of the very best in the country. They love their football down here. We pointed out at the top seven and four a year ago went to the Sun Bowl. That's not what they want. They want the Orange Bowl. Of course, uh, Peach Bowl team, West Virginia here. And there's the story on the first down. Up the middle they go with Fred Sims, the fullback. Not much going there. It is still Rod Pegues at uh, quarterback. Fred Sims, a sophomore, is running a fullback. Alvin Ross is at right half back. We'll pick the left up that three. Let's watch it again. All right, they're in an even set this time. And number 50 bouncing around pretty good for West Virginia is Dennis Folks. He's a good football player. They make a pile up front and they uh, secure the play for a loss. And now Dupree is in there. Marcus Dupree is at right half back for Oklahoma. So the fans waiting to see the first time they will get the ball. Here it is. Dupree from the pitch out to the 30 with power over the 35. 
you can just feel the excitement in this crowd as he gets his hands on the ball. Nothing doing because he ran out of running room and the best tackler on the field, the sideline. But they had a scrimmage, Jim, and he uh, rushed the ball six times for about 168 yards. They love this guy. You can see why. He's just well, got everything you need. They'll tell you down here he's going to be the fourth Heisman Trophy winner at Oklahoma before he leaves unless somebody wins the fourth one in between. They've had Billy Vessels and Steve Owens and Billy Sims. and Now they've got the great Marcus Dupree and great things expected for him in the future. Third down for Oklahoma. About three yards to go from the 35. Fullback Sims. And I don't think so. Stacked up about a yard short around the 37. Uh, West Virginia beginning to look more and more for the handoff to the fullback, and that may open up something else for Oklahoma a little later on. Well, very definitely, because Tally that time, the outside linebacker was coming on a stunt, and Barry Switzer will note that somebody in the box right above us will call that down. They'll pull it out, and they'll go with the option or the keeper. Now Barry Switzer getting his team off the field. Here's punting unit is on. Out is Keeling. You'll notice Keeling is wearing his shoe now for punting. He takes it off for field goal tries. There's the kick away. Backing up is uh, Dempsey at the 12 yard line. Here's Willie Dempsey. Breaks one tackle, but runs right into the arms of another man around the 25 and is taken down. So it is Gary Lowell who made the stop for Oklahoma, it looked like, around the 25 yard line, along with uh, Travis Simpson. So West Virginia takes over the ball again, and we'll remind you more about the Saturday night fights coming to you on ESPN. Bazooka Lyman and Chung Yil Choi. Well, you said that. <laughs> I said it, and it's September 18th, <laughs> and Sal Marshall and Al Bernstein are going to be right there for ESPN to bring you all the blow-by-blow -blow action. Don't miss it. We haven't seen the option at all from West Virginia. Thought they might run with Hosteller, and it just hasn't happened today. Wolfley now is at uh, fullback for West Virginia, and here's Hosteller giving all the deep handoff to Harvey, and he has spun, uh, tripped up at about the line of scrimmage. Well, that was a good sharp tackle by number 93 Flemons, the nose guard. He hit the center, secured him with a good forearm, and then just moved into the path of the ball carrier. That's good defense, held it to a yard gain. West Virginia, uh, about 15 or 20 years ago, in the time of Bruce Bosley and Sam Huff under Pappy Lewis, had uh, some bowl teams, but they've been down in the doldrums in recent years, and now. Don Nealon brought him back last year with nine victories, and here they're facing Oklahoma first game. Rolling Hofstra got a chance to run it. Going to keep it. 35-yard line for the first time, and he doesn't quite make it. Stopped by Jerry Sanders, who's replaced Ship at linebacking post as Switzer now has come in with his second-line defense. Number 15, Hostetler, about a yard short of a first down. It'll be third and one. They lost contain that time. Daryl Goodlow, 46, uh, unable to keep him inside. So it's third and very short for uh, West Virginia. They went with a sprint draw the last time. Irv, Daryl Miller's come in now for West Virginia. He was a great receiver. Lost last year in the first game with a bad knee. Had to have surgery. He's now in. He's flanked wide to the left side. Hofstetter back. Gives up the middle to his uh, fullback. And it'll be a first down for West Virginia. Once again, they went with a sprint draw, and they got good blocking from Dave Johnson. Kurt Kell was firing off the line of scrimmage. He uh, was able to get the job done. So uh, West Virginia, when it's really sticky, goes to the sprint draw or the straight draw, and they pick up the first down. Mickey Walls, that gets it to the 37-yard line, which first down. Jerry Sanders made the stop. Now Mullen has come in replacing Miller, so it's Mullen to the left side, Hollins to the right. Or Daryl Miller stays in there, so it's Miller to the right. Hofstetter fakes the draw. Hofstetter over the middle, and he has hit Miller at the 45, the 40 of Oklahoma to the 31. That's the biggest play of the game for West Virginia. And there was Daryl Miller showing the form he had a year ago in the opening game when he was lost with a knee injury. Has come back from that injury to make a great catch here with 6.53 to go in the first half. Well, that he did. West Virginia shows no sign of quitting. They slow the rush down with the draw, fake the draw, come back to Miller, who's running a crossing pattern, finds a seam. Wasn't anybody around him as the backers were froze. No underneath coverage. West Virginia's on the move here at the 31-yard line. Miller goes out. Hollins has come back in now. He is split wide to the left side. Now here's a draw play. The uh, tailback wall. Zach, good running inside the 25, almost the 20. About a 10-yard run, and a penalty flag is thrown downfield. It looks uh, like a late hit. Penalty flag thrown. I think it was against Daryl Sonji on the flag. Gary Lowell made the stop, but Sonji was down there, number 16. 
And this could be another uh, penalty against Oklahoma, but let's wait and see. It might be against West Virginia. Vance Carlson talking with the captains. Personal foul, Oklahoma. A 10 yard run for a first down by Walzak on the sprint draw. And then more of a penalty, Irv. All right, here's another look. The good blocking on the left side from Holsington and Leg. Notice they double down, Leg and Johnson on the nose. And here comes a good effort. They've run this draw effectively. And we'll get a look at the late hit right there. As a spear in the back, 92 Casillas, a defensive tackle. So here comes some other folks in for Oklahoma. Barry Switzer's getting serious once again. He puts Brian back in because West Virginia has had a very, very nice drive uh, keep by that pass reception to uh, Miller. Well, it's the only serious scoring uh, threat that West Virginia's been able to mount so far. They're trailing 14 0. A little over six minutes to go in the first half. First down, they can still get a first down without a touchdown. Here's a fake by Hostella rolling. Got time. Fires. It is incomplete at the two. Intended for the fullback Wolf Lee. Incomplete on the two yard line. And once more, the faking of Hostetler has been able to freeze the Oklahoma defense. Did an excellent job, Jim. Waited just a little, uh, maybe one count too late to release the football. That's three passes if you look at could'ves and should'ves that uh, I thought should have been completed. So now it's second and 10. West Virginia in this situation has been running the draw because Oklahoma really uh, lets their ears go and they run till they hear glass. Let's see if they run the draw again. Well, they might not have enough territory right here for the draw or the bound of the 10 yard line, but uh, we'll see. Good low, but great pressure that time. Now Rao switches to the left. Hostetler end zone and it is broken up. Almost is intercepted at the three yard line. The ball was tipped, but it did hit the turf incomplete. No interception. Incomplete. Boy, it looked like Oklahoma had played a little volleyball there and come up with a turnover. That's the old tip play. Thomas Benson is the guy who gave the underneath coverage. Thought he tipped it up so that they could have the interception. I believe it was Sanji. But it doesn't happen. Once again, this is Hostetler, transfer from Penn State. We saw him play two years ago against Missouri. Drops back. He's looking for his back coming out of the backfield. A little circle pad. I beg your pardon. That's a tight end row. Tip play. Thought he had it. Doesn't happen. So West Virginia has another shot. Well, a great tip there by number 38, Thomas Benson, outstanding linebacker from Ardmore, Oklahoma. Now it is third and ten, West Virginia. Oklahoma defense is stiffer in the end zone. And it is incomplete. Batted down and tended for Walzak. That's good defense by Oklahoma. 49, Jackie Ship. West Virginia came out in a wide slot and they tried to go underneath. Decision time for Don Nealon. Fourth down. Do you go for the field goal? You're down 14 to nothing. It's tough to score against these people. Looks like they will go for the field goal. Number three coming in. This is Paul Woodside. Or if there are those linebackers we talked about at the top of the telecast, Thomas Benson makes one big play by putting pressure, and then there was Jackie Ship on the other side batting down the pass. So they're the great strength of the Oklahoma defense. There have been so many good ones down here. Probably the best I've seen is the guy by the name of Rod Schott, and they compare Ship and Benson, both of these guys, with Rod Schott. Woodside and now will be trying a 26-yard field goal. It's pretty long and he's got it and West Virginia has drawn its first score against Oklahoma with six minutes and five seconds to go in the first half. Oklahoma continues to lead but the Mountaineers are on the board and it's now Sooners 14 the Mountaineers 3. West Virginia now will kick off. Six minutes, five seconds to go. And the first half, 14 to three in favor of Oklahoma. Kicker for West Virginia will be Michael, uh, will be Paul Woodside, sophomore from Falls Church, Virginia. And back deep, the receivers, Stanley Wilson, Alvin Ross for Oklahoma. Taking it up the five yard line. And right out of bounds on the 25. So Oklahoma will take over the uh, tw about the 25 or 26 yard line. Weldon Ledbetter it was around the back to kick off on the 26. 14 3, Oklahoma. Sooners who have scored now in 180 consecutive games. That's the NCAA record. The last time they shut out was 1966. 
That was by Notre Dame. But that inexperienced line has not shown thus far. Now Kelly Phelps comes back in for Oklahoma. Here's Phelps running the opposite. Watch the one hand. Well, he's going to pitch it out wide. Goes out of bounds. Ball actually rolled back toward the Oklahoma goal and might have lost a yard or two. Tell you what, you got to be a shortstop every once in a while playing in Barry Switzer's offense because they kick it around pretty good. You got to love it, uh, what you see, though, Jim, because it is a high risk offense. It forces people to make an adjustment. I think it's a fun offense because it's very physical. Everybody gets involved, and you got to have 11 players playing 11 on 11. No, uh, no room for the tender hearted. You, know, you just uh, you just can't have that type of guy playing in the wishbone. It's a good offense to watch for a fan. Well, it's back to the 23. It'll be second down, almost 13 yards to go as Phelps again has the boundary on the left side. Now the trap play comes up the middle to his left half back. And Stanley Wilson gets it past the 30, stopped around the 31 to 32. Got a good block inside from Paul Parker once again. We've been calling his name a bunch. He's just a good all-around athlete. He has lost that weight. He works hard in the weight room and makes a difference. Well, here's a big play now for Don Nealon's West Virginia Mountaineers. It's third down for Oklahoma, and it's back in Oklahoma territory on the 36. West Virginia's not been able to stop Oklahoma and force a punt today. Let's see what they can do here. Here's a rollout and a completion is dropped. Incomplete pass. Looked like that David Carter was wide open over there on the 45 and may have taken his eye off the ball at the last moment to look for the defender. Well, it'll give him some heat when he comes back uh, a little later on. Hitch in a bad place in the hands, but that happens. He just tried to look upfield. That time the defense was a 4-3. Don Nealon is an odd uh, man front normally uh, type of guy, but he went to the even defense when it was really sticky. Interesting. Willie Drury is back now, is back in, is killing the punt. There's Drury, number 48, a sophomore from Columbus, uh, New Jersey. They do a good job on special teams. They've got a fine middle return. Let's see if it's on. Off the side of his foot, a short kick taken by the up man, Reggie Armstead. And Armstead is hit down almost immediately, but he has it around the 36-yard line. That's not bad field position here for West Virginia, who were able to go down the field and score for the first time the last time they had the football. It was a field goal, but it's now 14-3. And where they were effective is running the draw, and they were running uh, patterns right behind the li linebackers. They seemed to guess right with Oklahoma when a stunt was coming. Let's see what they come up with now. I've been impressed with Hostetler. Throws the ball pretty good on the run. He cuts down half of the field when he does it, but he's been effective. Well, let's see if Oklahoma goes to more blitzing here and tries to put more pressure on Jeff Hostetler because his passing has opened things up a little bit better for West Virginia. No contact. Hostetler, short handoff to Mickey Walzak. Walzak is pounded back hard after a short game. Jackie Ship making the stop. There's actually Cam Zop on the carry, number 43. This is Murphy and Ship. It's just a straight drive, straight ahead, and look at number 49, Jackie Ship. He can play. It's just as simple as that. The guy knows how to play the football game. He's very physical. He's got some stamina. Great one-two punch with uh, Ship and his buddy Benson. Rolling Hofsteller, Hofsteller going down the left side for the bomb. Got a man out there at the 20, 15 to 10. And it is caught for a long, long game by Rich Hollins. And here is West Virginia striking through the air again to Rich Hollins, number 88, on the arm of Jeff Hostetler. Boy, anybody who didn't think that the Miners were going to have uh, some type of passing attack this year were wrong when Oliver Locke left because this guy can throw the football. His home run threat is Hollins. Looks to the right, a la Johnny Unitas comes back with a perfect pass, beats the left cornerback, Scott Case. And only the speed of Case catches up. West Virginia on the move. They're down 11 points, but they're on the 10-yard line. Great recovery by Steve Hayworth of free safety, or that might have been one for six points for Rich Hollins. It is first down and goal to go. West Virginia at the Oklahoma 10. To the right now, Daryl Miller, sure-handed receivers in there. Here's the throw to Miller, incomplete. Penalty flags down. I'm sure West Virginia was in motion on that play. The Mountaineers might be getting a little bit excited. Looked like the right side, possibly Kurt Kill moved just a little bit. Let's see if uh, Oklahoma turns it down. The pass was incomplete. Might take the play here, which will bring up second down. That's the option here of uh, Barry Switzer's Sooners. Don Nealon, who was a great quarterback himself at Bowling Green uh, University, played for Doyd Perry, who was a fine coach. Talking here with some of his assistant coaches along the sidelines for West Virginia. 
Here's declined by Oklahoma. They'll take the down, and that gives West Virginia only three more plays. And if they should not make it the next two, they might go over the field goal. So they had only two tries more to get it in the end zone. Hollins who made the big catches down to the right. And it is Hofstetler throwing in the end zone. Touchdown out of the backfield. That is caught. I think it's the fullback Zap. He's being. Nope, that's the tight end, Mark Rowell. The great All American candidate. And West Virginia scored a touchdown for the first time. And look at the Mountaineer faithful. They slow down the rush by faking the draw. And then the tight end Rouse will get behind number six, Steve Hayworth. This is an excellent toss by a guy who's done a very good job. Hostetler, very impressive, has his ball club right back in it. We have 3.55 remaining in the half. They're down 14 to 9, kicking the extra point. I'm surprised they don't go for two here, uh, Irv, to cut it, try and cut it 14 11 to get them within a field goal, but they'll try to make it 14 10. The snap and the kick is up and good. That's what it'll be with three minutes 55 seconds to go and Hostetler now six out of 13 for 100 yards is brought back West Virginia. It's now Oklahoma 14 and West Virginia 10. And suddenly the complexity of this game has changed here in the first half. Oklahoma was off and running the first time, two times it had the ball, leading 14 0. On the goal again, but missed a field goal. And West Virginia has been sparked since then. They've scored the last 10 points to cut the margin to four. Did an excellent job on that drive. The key play was Hostetler to Hollins on the streak down the left side. That set it up. And then Hostetler play action to Rao. So we're ready for the West Virginia kickoff. We got ourselves a dandy now. Stanley Wilson and Weldon Ledbetter, the two veteran backs waiting down here for Oklahoma. That's Wilson about the five. 15, the 20, and spilled as he crosses the 20 yard line around the 21. Oklahoma will start from its 21, first and 10. Jerome Ledbetter it was who was carrying that ball on the return. You can see West Virginia seem to come to life now. They have more confidence. They have come into Norman. A little bit apprehensive on that first drive. Sewell hurt him badly as Oklahoma took it down and scored. Second time a penalty helped the Sooners get in the end zone. Here's where the crowd tries to take over down here. They're really getting involved. West Virginia's got to play some tough defense right now. Well, the Sooner fans want no more of this. They want that uh, wishbone to get going again. And Kelly Phelps is on the field with his number one backfield. Gives to Weldon Ledbetter. Just bucks his way up to the 24. Gain of three, it'll be second down and seven. Chuck Harris did a good job. Number seven, he hit, slid to the inside, and made a fine play. If he can hold the bone to a three-yard average, you're going to be in good shape because that's an explosive offense. They like to see it average six and seven. That better having a good day, 59 yards he's gained so far. He's been the workhorse in the Oklahoma backfield. Paul Clewis comes out wide to the left side, and they set the right half back winners as a wing back. Take the full back. Oh, man. Is Wilson ever chilled by a crunching tackle by West Virginia and thrown for a loss back around the 21 yard line? That was Rich Walters, and he just came in on a stunt to the right. You talk about good defensive play. They slanted right away from the boundary. Watch 97 come into your picture right. Well, we got the inside of that uh, action, but West Virginia has forced the Sooners into a third and nine. Most of the time in this situation, Jim, Barry Switzer doesn't throw. He comes with the option. The wide side of the field is to the left. They break the bone. Well, West Virginia is aroused. No question about that. Here goes the option for the boundary by Phelps. He will go nowhere. He is taken down hard by an inspired West Virginia team. The Mountaineers have taken hard after their 10 points being cheered here by the small van, almost swallowed by the 70,000 plus of Oklahoma supporters. But Oklahoma now facing fourth down and eight from their 22. Keep in mind, they have blocked a field goal. They've got nine people up on the line of scrimmage. I think they'll set the wall to the right, but they are capable of going after them. Keeling's there, back deep waiting is uh, Drury. West Virginia expect to get good field position. Nice punt by Keeling. Drury backpedaling at the 24. Now looking for a block. Nothing there. Being surrounded. Taken down hard. Giving ground that cost him. Back to the 20. Great coverage by Oklahoma. Sooners were down under that one in a hurry. And West Virginia will be way back upfield, trailing by four. 
Well, as you watch this football action, let's remind you of the live top-ranked boxing coming September 16th. That'll be from the Sands Hotel in Atlantic City. Sam Rose and Randy Gordon bringing you the bout between James Broad and Eddie Mack. These are two hard-hitting heavyweights and an ESPN final. So don't remember, don't miss this 12-rounder. Top-ranked boxing September 16th. Now let's see what Hosteller can do. Backed up in his own territory. He'll start the 22. Hosteller on the draw. Gives to his halfback Harvey. And King Harvey with great second ever gets over the 30. Picks up about nine yards on the play. I'll tell you what that has done to. It slowed uh, Brian, the great All-American tackle out of the University of Oklahoma. That slowed the rush up. He, I watched him that time through the glasses. He hit. He didn't come on hard simply because they're very alert now and aware of the draw. That play has been very effective. Uh, here's a dangerous spot for a defense. There's King Harvey. 638 yards he's carried up. Now hostile or passing quarterback has got second and one. So there's several things you can do right here. He brings Brown in motion. He's going for the first down. Harvey tries outside. Got the first down. 35 tripped up on the 36. But it's another first down with the Mountaineers. And the blue and gold now for Morgantown rolling again. Scott Case made that play from Oklahoma coming up from his right cornerback spot. Good block that time by Cam Zop, number 43. And I know that you know his daddy. His daddy coached him in high school. Well, Some Granville, kind of family. Granville Zop was a great running back at Marshall University. We used to call him Zippity Zop. And so <laughs> Zippity kind of Zop? Chip off the old block. <laughs> Zippity Zop and chip off the old block. I like that, Jimmy. That could Le fly. Less than a minute to go <laughs> here in the first half. So Hostetler is going to have to go to the air. Oklahoma will be looking for it. And motion comes Mullen. Big draw, Hosteller, Hosteller going downfield. He's got the brewery down there for the 20. He's got it in the 15. Unbelievable with less than a minute to go. They let Willie Drury get behind the defense. Oklahoma does and it's cost him again. Very definitely, Stanberry couldn't stay with him as 48. Drury did an excellent job. This guy, Hosteller, has done it all. Here he comes, fakes the uh, sprint draw. Not much of a fake that time, but it does slow the rush down. Got the good arm thrown into the wind, gets the chores done as Drury, who's impressed us on special teams play, gives his ball club a shot. Timeout now for West Virginia. They've got 41 seconds left. They're uh, down 14 to 10, and they've got the ball on the 16-yard uh, line. We got ourselves a go-getter here. Well, there's Willie Drury being pounded by his teammates on the sidelines, and now Hostetler was at 7 out of 14 for 156 yards. And Hostetler is trying to rub out the memory of Oliver Luck here in the very first game of the season. This could be the year of the Hostetler. There's a guy playing by the name of Dave Hostetler for the Texas Rangers hadn't had too bad a year. And now this guy's throwing the ball all over the field here in Oklahoma. There's the timeout situation. West Virginia still has one to call with 41 seconds to go. But how can Oklahoma, with less than a minute to go, have a team backed up inside its 30, let a receiver get behind them? Well, I guarantee you Barry Switzer is going to be asking those questions at halftime because all of a sudden, after taking a 14 to nothing lead, had to harpoon in, and instead of bending it off, they let this ball club up off the deck. And you don't do that with Don Nealon. Barry Switzer made a big point before the ball game. Don Nealon can coach. There's a very worried Barry Switzer. Don Nealon is not the kind of a guy who's going to let things get sloppy. So they're right back in. And, Jimmy, you could just see them gain confidence as the afternoon has gone on. They feel they can win. Well, it started when they blocked the field goal. I think that was the spark that ignited them. And I was West Virginia front. They told they fell out in the end zone. It's first and 10 at the Oklahoma 16. They face this rugged center defense. Willie Brown and uh, Wayne Brown in motion. Fake. Hostel and roll. Got time. Fires. Great catch down here by Walzak or by Zop. There's Cam Zop with a one hand grab, and it's about the six yard line of Oklahoma. You Boy. know how tough that was? The ball was thrown on the right shoulder, and he's going looking over the left shoulder. Slow down the rush by faking play action. Motion slows it down, too. Here's the play action. He gets a block right there, spins out. Watch the grabber. Ball should have been thrown on the left shoulder. Hosteller isn't happy with himself, but that's what uh, happens when a team gets fired up and they can make those unbelievable plays, and that's what that was. 35 seconds left to go. The ball is on the six-yard line. All right, 43. Cam Zop played for his father. We told you, Granville Zop, up at Buck Up uh, High School in Buchanan, West Virginia. What a catch. Third down, a yard to go. Second down, a yard. Fake. Here's the end zone throw. Touchdown! It's caught in there beautifully by Darrell Miller, and Oklahoma trails as West Virginia takes the lead with 30 seconds to go. 
I guarantee you, Hosteller had no idea because he was flat on his back. Wait Jerry Lowe just Wait leveled him. We've got a penalty. What do we got here? Penalty flag is down. I think West Virginia's touchdown is going to be nullified. Let's watch it again, but I don't think this play will count. All right, look at the pressure as Oklahoma really comes after him. There's the level right there by Lowe. Touchdown right there, but they'll call it back. So uh, West Virginia still has 31 seconds to get something on the board. Keep in mind, they're, they're down 14-10. With what? a full half remaining, Jimmy. So uh, Don Nealon wants to make sure that he th uh, throws very high percentage passes. Make sure you don't have an interception. Keep in mind they can't get the three. Watch the man, the white head. Vance Carls needs the referee. Put it down right there, the 16-yard line. This is like the original line of scrimmage, just about. Oh, a costly penalty against West Virginia. They could have taken the lead with this one. Here's another look. You get uh, good pressure from the outside by 25. Well, Gary Lowell coming hard. That was the holding too. Scott <laughs> Barrows, you can see. Scott Barrows was trying to hold on the back of the jersey of the Oklahoma player. Barrows okay. in for Gist, who was injured very early. Second down. Ten yards to go from 16. Fake drop. Hostel into the end zone. And it is incomplete. Trying to go to Willie again. Well, that's excellent coverage in the end zone by number six, Steve Hayworth. He had some help underneath from Ship, but Hayworth did the job. Willie Drury uh, was there. Absolutely. There's Don Brown, one of the assistants that came over with uh, Don Nealon. He was at Michigan also with uh, Bo Schembechler. Billy Alton's on the staff. He was the head coach at uh, uh, UTEP last year. 26 seconds remaining. Third down. If they don't get it in this time, they, I would assume, go for a field goal. It goes back to that two-point try we were talking about, but... Uh, that's history now. Here's a big play, third down, and here's Hosteller sacked. That'll make the field goal try it even tougher. Great rush by Oklahoma, put on awesome pressure. That was number 88, Mike Weddington, the backup defensive end, and he slanted inside. The backer ran outside, and a good job of uh, guessing the play coming by OU. So they get the chores done. West Virginia. Tommy Fleming's also involved. West Virginia kills the clock, call timeout with 18 seconds to go. That's their final timeout. They get the field goal unit on. Paul Woodside, number three, is on. So West Virginia cannot take the lead here. They can cut the margin down to one. A couple of the assistants there on Don Nealon's uh, staff. West Virginia has turned things around. The second quarter has belonged mainly to the Mountaineers after Oklahoma, under Barry Switzer, dominated the first quarter. So Switzer, who uh, suffered a little bit last year through four lost season, has uh, some things to talk about at halftime. Well, it really does because West Virginia has really settled down defensively. They've been very impressive in the second period, and the passing game of Hosteller would worry me. This guy can throw the football. He's got some people that can catch the ball. So this will be a field goal attempt as West Virginia tries to cut it to one. To be a 38-yard attempt by Paul Woodside. Here's the kick. That's plenty long enough. Is it true? It is. So West Virginia's pull within a point. The Mountaineers down 14 nothing has come back strong with a 13 point second quarter and with 13 seconds to go in the first half it's only a point separating these two and we got a game. Yes we do. Uh, the thing that impresses you always about Nealon known a lot about him since he was at Bowling Green. They handle the three fundamentals correctly. They block they tackle and they get off a block. I would think West Virginia would just try to kick the ball along the ground here so that would not get any kind of a run back and uh, try to run off as much of those 13 seconds as possible. Of course the big thing that they do not want to happen is to let Oklahoma hit one pass and get it down for a long field goal effort. But you make a good point Jimmy if you kick the ball deep to that kind of speed you're in serious trouble because they're capable of going all the way. 32 on your right of course is uh, Stanley Wilson. And over on the left side was Jerome Ledbetter the last time, and I think he's over there again. There it is, the little uh, kick. Oh, it looked like it might have been an onside try, but Oklahoma's got it. Oh, he gets away. West Virginia recovers at the 33 with 10 seconds to go. Now West Virginia has no timeout remaining in the first half. They get the football with 10 seconds to go. Well, well would, they could get it out of bounds in close serve and try for a, for a field goal. Well, they do have their quarterback in the game. Here's another look at the little bump kick. That's one of the toughest ones off the uh, artificial turf. West Virginia's hustling. Everything is going their way now. They'd have to throw a quick sideline pattern, Jim, 
and uh, if they were able to hit one down around the 25 yard line, it'd give their kicker Woodside another shot. 10 seconds, if you throw about a, a 10 yard out, you're in good shape and you do have the uh, time left to kick a field goal. Yeah, the other option, of course, is go for the end zone, go for everything. And that's what he's going to go down the end He's zone. And it is touchdown. Can you believe that? It what an effort. caught down there by Daryl Miller, who makes another great catch for West Virginia. And West Virginia has gone ahead of Oklahoma, a stunned Sooner team here in the dying moments of the first half. Jimmy Rockford must have been thinking the same thing I was thinking. They'd throw an out pattern because he came up to the line of scrimmage. And that isn't what was going to go on. They just uh, went with a straight fly pattern as Hostetler moved to his right a couple of steps to take the defense with him. He threw back across the grain a little bit, and West Virginia has shocked this crowd. And now will West Virginia go for two and try to make it a seven-point lead at 21 to 14? What would you do, Earl? I would just go for the one. A lot of football left to be played here, right. Jim, but what the heck? What do I know? That's what's <laughs> going to be. Woodside is in to try for the kick to try to make it 20 to 14. West Virginia has shocked Oklahoma in the second quarter. And the kick is true. It's now 20 to 14, 20 straight points as the passing of Hostetler has been the difference. Nine out of 17 for 199 yards in the first half. Only seconds to go in the first half. Five seconds on the clock. That's what we said a few seconds ago when there was 13 seconds left. Just be sure you don't give Oklahoma a chance. But uh, this West Virginia team, you know, I learned something uh, once when Georgia won the national championship. And the coach, Vince Dooley, said, you got to have everything going your way. you got to be lucky. Here's another look. A little sprint to the right. Going to come back, throw against the grain. Once again, Jim Rockford came up a little bit. And it's just a straight fly pattern. And West Virginia has just been unbelievable. I got to believe they'll uh, bump kick it again here. As Darrell Miller makes a stumbling catch in the end zone. Boy, Miller's come back from his knee surgery. What a play that was for this senior from Philadelphia, Pennsylvania. Would you like to have a microphone in the Oklahoma dressing room at Ooh. halftime? No, you'd need a few because a couple of the early ones will be burned out, I'm afraid. 20 to 14, West Virginia leading Oklahoma. Five seconds to go on the half. West Virginia moments ago was able to pull off a successful onside kick which by the way was called successfully by our great director but uh, we didn't pick it up so Big John keep going John, you, pal? John David Crow <laughs> Heisman Trophy winner of the truck five seconds remaining here <laughs> in the first half oh boy don't you know the second half is going to be something there's the little there's the one on the ground we expected to run off the time well they, they don't get and it is Wilson Wilson looking for a block breaks a couple and now he's spun down and time has run out That'll be the end of the first half from Owen Field, and here's an inspired Oklahoma, our West Virginia team, leaving the field, and Barry Switzer, a lot going through his mind, and he goes off with his crimson-clad Sooners. The halftime score, Oklahoma 14, West Virginia 20. Well, in the first half here at Norman, which was almost like two different halves, the first quarter all Oklahoma, second quarter all West Virginia, and you can see how West Virginia came back was certainly on the passing of Jeff Hostetler. Well, he was really the key, as you point out, Jim. He did an excellent job. Not much rushing, but uh, yeah, when you're throwing that well and getting back in, it was just an excellent second period for the Mountaineers. 253 yards for West Virginia, 221 yards for Oklahoma total offense, fairly even, but balance between Oklahoma rushing, West Virginia passing. Look at the turnovers. None either side. Oklahoma's put the ball on the turf two or three times with their option play, but each time it's going out of bounds. There's the uh, first downs, 11 to 9 in favor of Oklahoma. They got most all those in the first quarter. West Virginia came back with all theirs in the second quarter. Penalties just about even. Oklahoma had the choice here to start the second half. They elect to receive. West Virginia will take the win. Defend the goal to your right. And there is Paul Woodside ready to kick off. Now here comes Woodside to kick off for West Virginia. Back is Dupree in the end zone. Takes his over his shoulder and out of bounds. And Oklahoma will start with the touchback on the 22. The Highly touted freshman, perhaps the most renowned freshman player this year in America, is uh, Marcus Dupree. 
was in there for the kickoff but got no chance to run it back. Now Oklahoma with a thunderous cheer from their fans will try to get things untracked here in the third period, trailing 20 to 14. And Jimmy, even though they are down six, keep in mind this ball club is capable of putting four on the board so quick. West Virginia and Don Nealon are aware of it. They played excellent defense the latter part of the second period. They were doing a lot of slant. Let's see if they continue to do that up front. Kelly, Even defense. Uh, Phelps, the quarterback, and he gives up the middle to his fullback, Ledbetter, and Ledbetter, who was the early leader for Oklahoma, slants to his left, back against the motion. Over the 25, gets a nice gain, seven or eight yards on the play. That's been the key for them, run left. There is another West Virginia football player down. That time, West Virginia came out in an even set of 4-3, and, and Don Nealon is an odd set uh, coach up front. There's an injury. There's Don right there on headsets. He's very concerned about this injury. We'll put the glasses on and see who exactly is down for the Mountaineers. They've had about five people go down, and, of course, the key one, Jim, was Campbell, the All-American tackle. We haven't seen him since early in the first period. Well, I can't tell who this is. It might be Reggie Armstead, who's the... Uh, one of the cornerbacks. You yeah. mentioned uh, Don Nealon, though. He's really done a remarkable job in rejuvenating the West Virginia program and had him in a bowl game last year with nine victories. Well, we'll wait here for a moment. We'll remind you of more action coming from the Canadian Football League on ESPN. This will be September 18th at 1.30 p.m. Eastern Time. Winnipeg with Dieter Brock will take on Ottawa, a great cup team of a year ago at Lansdowne Park in Ottawa, Canada. And Don Witten, Ron Lancaster, and Lee Oka Hill will bring you all the action here on ESPN, your Total Sports Network. The guy who is down, uh, as you pointed out, is Timmy Agee. Defensive back, just a little guy. He's played very good football for West Virginia. So Tim runs off under his own power. We'll see him in a few plays. Well, they brought in Rich Rodriguez, a sophomore from Grandtown, West Virginia, now to play free safety. L.A. Phelps with a sends his fullback in motion and on a little short trap play gives to Wilson up the middle. Wilson was contained pretty well in the first half by West Virginia. Here he scores the first down as he advances out over the 30 to around the 33. Number 32, Stanley Wilson gained 2,158 yards so far to rank seventh among all Oklahoma rushers. Had over 1,000 yards last year, and he was just stopped by Dennis Folks, the Mr. Inside of West Virginia. Got a little help, too, from Chuck Harris. Once again, Don Nealon going with an even defense. It's a 4-3. That's something that he hasn't done very much. The key is the middle backer 50, Dennis Folks. Now they got fake to let better and they keep and there's the pitch on the outside and they were going to the right halfback Chet Winters that time on the wide play and he just ran out of playing field crossing the 35 number 40 maybe the most complete back in the Oklahoma backfield but so far Stanley Wilson has not been able to get going here in his first game as a halfback he had a great three years starting at fullback for Oklahoma over 2,000 yards. He's averaged better than six yards a carry, which is best in the college football ranks among those who've gained 2,000 or more. Rolling is Phelps. Phelps fires on the run. Broken up at the 45-yard line that was intended for Paul Cluis and a great defense by West Virginia. Once again, A.G. is back in, and he got hurt. He's got a cramp. Notice that they're pushing the foot uh, back, and when you do that, it's simply a cramp, letting one muscle take over for the other. It was sprint uh, draw time. And they threw the football. A.G. did a very good job. Well, right now we'll get a breather here. West Virginia early in the third period continues to lead Oklahoma. What could be a great upset. It's 20 to 14. There's West Virginia. Three for seven and third down. Oklahoma facing third down. Wilson gets the first down and more. Breaking the sidelines over the 50-40. Wilson turning loose now at the 30-yard line of West Virginia. And there finally is the All-America form of Stanley Wilson. You can hold him down only so long. And he almost broke it for the distance. The first down of the West Virginia 30-yard line. Jimmy, they came out and they broke the wishbone to the right and then used motion back to the left going into the boundary. And Wilson just got out and set him down. This is Chet Winters who can block. All right, here we get a good look. I think uh, when uh, Stanley looks at the footage again, if he stays on the sideline, he scores because I thought he had the angle. West Virginia able to finally run him down. Coming in to help out with Greg McGowan, but it was Steve Newberry, the cornerback who made the play. 
Very short gain here on first down, but now Oklahoma threatening here as they've gotten the ball down to West Virginia territory inside the 30 yard line. It'll be spotted on the 28 for a gain of a pair, second down and eight. Barry Switzer continues to fret along the sidelines. His teams have never lost an opening game at Oklahoma. Matter of fact, Oklahoma's lost the one the last 13 in a row, nine of them under Switzer. Second down play for Kelly Phelps, the senior quarterback, a great runner, and now developing somewhat as a passer, gives inside to the fullback. Weldon Ledbetter had a great first half, Ledbetter did. And the slant this time carries him down the 25, maybe the 24. Just Italian, inside the 25. Italian folks, Jimmy, make the tackle. Once again, Don Nealon has shown something he did not show all during the spring, going with an even defense of 4 3. That means Folks is in uh, the middle, and they're just lining up head, uh, head up with the Oklahoma linemen Here's just the uh, to find them. Third down play. So far, Phelps has hit five out of ten in converting third down plays. 50%, which isn't too bad. Now it's third down. He needs a long four. Running the option. Now is the pitch back early. Won't get it. That was Wilson, and the pitch came very early. And credit the West Virginia defense for getting pressure to Phelps to force the pitch. And once again, the guy we've talked about all day long, Folks, makes the tackle. The crowd wants Barry Switzer to go for the first down. Thus far, we don't see the field goal kicker, and uh, maybe Barry will try and keep the drive going. He's got about two and a half yards for the first down. Fourth down coming up. Oh, what a big play for Oklahoma. David Carter brings the word in from Barry Switzer. Now Switzer. I think they want nope I thought he was going to ask for a timeout. Yep he wants it. He's going to want it. So Switzer wants to talk things over. This could be a critical play for one thing psychologically. If you don't make it Irv just think what a surge that gives to West Virginia again. Well there isn't any question about it and you talk about psychologically near the end of the first half for those who just have joined us. Oklahoma was receiving a kickoff 13 seconds left to go onside time for West Virginia. They scored on the next play a pass Hostetler to Miller and that's why they have the lead 20 to 14. The right side of the field is to the left side. They've had a lot of success with Ledbetter the fullback. Switzer is talking it over. Galen Hall is upstairs. This is a look at the West Virginia bench. Don Nealon on headsets. One of the guys with him on the sideline is uh, Billy Alton was the head coach that pointed out of UTEP. That would be the kicking angle. The ball is uh, well to the right hash marks. The wind is uh, right in the face of the Oklahoma team, so it'd be kicking against the wind about a 40 yard attempt. So it would be a very tough assignment for Michael Keeling, even if they decided to go for the field goal. But I think they're going to try for the first down. And the key when you have a short yardage situation is the middle linebacker. We'll keep our eye on folks because what happens here, the lineman will get down and submarine and try and uh, uproot things. Folks will try and clean up up top. Let's see if they go to Ledbetter. They are breaking the bone to the left. All right, Ledbetter's the fullback, and now here comes the tight end over to the right side. Now here comes Wilson back, and here's the keep outside by Kelly's going to have the first down and maybe more touchdown by Phelps. Kelly Phelps, a brilliant call. And Oklahoma is back tied in the ball game. One of the great calls that you'll see by Barry Switzer. They used motion from the left side after changing the tight end. Wilson went in motion to the right. That got some shift and a movement by the West Virginia defense. And Phelps ran the option, found a seam, cut into the end. I've always liked this guy. He's had some injury problems. He can run 4-4. Anytime you have a quarterback running that type of, uh, or that with that type of speed, I should say, Jimmy, you're in serious trouble. Oklahoma can take the lead with this kick. There's Michael Keeling's kick up in the air, and it is good. And Oklahoma, once more, is in the lead in the game. So the Sooners have come back, and a brilliant, gritty fourth down play by Kelly Phelps, who races in to score, and it's now Sooners 21, the Mountaineers 20. Well, there's another West Virginia player shaking up a bit. That's Dennis Folks, a great linebacker who was uh, injured on the try for the point. 
but finally recovers his feet. But what a great play this was by Kelly Phelps. Well, what a call by Barry Switzer. They faked the, uh, the fullback, come down with the option. Look at this hole as they were able to hold on to the linebacker and secure him, taught about folks. And Kelly Phelps, who's got the great speed, finds the seam, and it's just a piece of cake. Oklahoma now on top, 21 to 20. That is a great call by uh, Galen Hall and Barry Switzer. 23-yard run by Phelps. Oklahoma still in the lead. Now here's the kickoff. Taken inside the five-yard line. Here's Drury up over the 20, 30. Gray got some room. The 40, 45, and on goes Willie Drury over the 45-yard line. And West Virginia comes up with great field position now for Jeff Hostetler. Boy, do they do a job on special teams? What a block that time by number 33 King. They start close to midfield again. There's the uh, story on the scoring drive as Oklahoma took the lead. But now West Virginia has the football, and they're in great shape with the uh, quarterback Hostetler at the helm. That's the third time today that Oklahoma's had an 80-yard drive to score. This one went nine plays. They scored the first time they had it in six plays, and then in 13 plays they went 80 yards. Oklahoma leads by a point. Hosteller fakes on the sprint, sprint. Here's Hosteller drills it, and it's caught beautifully around the 40-yard line for a first down. What a brilliant catch that was by Wayne Brown of West Virginia. He's the speedy flanker back, and it's a first and ten, I think. This is a guy who came on at the end of the year, looked very good in the Peach Bowl. He can run 4-4, can also return a punt for you. The ball was thrown poorly that time by Hosteller. He's been on target most of the day. This case, instead of throwing on the left side, he threw it on the right side. But what an effort by Brown as West Virginia continues to impress. At the Oklahoma 42, West Virginia goes right back to the aerial attack of Jeff Hostetler. He plundered the Oklahoma defense in the second quarter. Runs the draw play. Got an opening. Up the middle goes Walzak and down to the 36-yard line. What they're doing, Jim, is taking advantage of the quickness of Oklahoma, particularly Bryan. They start that sprint draw out around the tackle, even as far out as the end. They cut it back over the guard. It's very effective. They picked up good yardage. They've only been able to run that play and the draw today. That was Jackie Ship who made the stop. Don Nealon's uh, passing attack has performed uh, outstandingly here in the uh, second and now again in the third period. Short hand off the fullback Ron Wolfley trying to plunge for the first down. The Oklahoma defense is not caught napping. He gets a short game, but it stops short of the chain. So it'll be inside the 35, but the uh, third down call now. For yeah. Don Nealon. In comes Daryl Miller with the play. Had a little bit of a scuffle that time. Leg 62 was trapping John Blake. Got the job done, but then they uh, battled a little bit at the end. Kind of shook hands, so they're all right. Third and short. The key here is the linebacker now. Well, Oklahoma faced a big play on fourth down. Here's a big one for West Virginia. Third and a yard. There goes Ral, the tight end over the right side. Here's the tailback. Wall. Zach has a first down, I think. Looked like his motion got down to the 31-yard line. That will be a first down for West Virginia. Excellent call. They pulled Scott Barrows on the sprint draw, and it looks like the forward motion. There's Vance Carlson with the signal. West Virginia on the move again. We're early in the third period. Oklahoma has come back here in the third quarter to regain the lead for Barry Switzer, 21 to 20. An outstanding fourth down play did it. Now Switzer's team, which is facing a tough schedule this year six more bowl teams coming up including Southern Cal Nebraska and Texas they have their hands full right at the moment with West Virginia and the I formation walls back of the tail line Hostel to walls that flips off the side fumbles the ball can't hold it Boy, walls had some room might have gotten down for about six or seven yards at least he did have some room as you pointed out barrels was pulling and leading doing a good job it all goes for naught, brings up the uh, second and 10. They have gone to the draw in this situation or faking the draw. Here's an injury for Oklahoma. Number 10, Scott Case, the defensive back is down. Nealon is watching him intently. If they take him out, got to believe that they'll throw in that area. We'll watch and see if Case has to leave the action. Brian Hall, a sophomore from Houston, has come on the field. He's the backup for Case. And Case is going to have to go off. So Brian Hall is in at right cornerback. That'll be toward the boundary here, and let's see if Hostetler tries to jump on that spot. Last time they were in that situation, Hostetler had a half sprint to his right and then threw to Miller on the left side. We'll see if uh, they go with that play again. A lot of times you go back to what's been good for you. Well, it looks like that uh, Switzer's going to pull off a lineman and bring in a fifth back, so an uh, extra defender is back in the backfield looking for the pass. Hostel rolling down the middle. Got his man up on him, and it is caught in here beautifully by Brack, and he is going. Touchdown. Carlin 
and back goes all the way for West Virginia. And the Mountaineers have exploded right back. That is an excellent call once again by Nealon. He got double coverage on the left side on the wide out. And so they go up the seam to Curlin Beck. Hosteller with that half sprint to the right, which we thought he would do, but I thought he'd go deep to the flanker. Uh-uh. Instead to the back coming out, running just a little circle. That's an excellent effort by Beck to get in the end zone. 20, 241 yards for Jeff Hostetler, who has taken over brilliantly now in the absence of the graduated Oliver Luck and the passing attack of West Virginia is continuing. And is Paul Woodside to try with the point after. Good snap, good kick. And West Virginia now has opened up a six-point lead once more with eight minutes and 53 seconds to go in quarter number three from Norman, Oklahoma. The home team is stunned at the moment. It's West Virginia 27, Oklahoma 21. Here's a look at the secondary. Daryl Miller was the wide receiver. He just kind of runs in here easily. But number 20 is a guy who's wide open as Oklahoma just doesn't get any underneath coverage. And then as the uh, two tacklers kind of run into each other, number 20, Beck splits the seam and he scores. And there if it was 21, Brian Hall, who replaced Case that missed the tackle. So just as we talked about, unfortunately for Oklahoma, Case goes out with an injury. And they come right back and score. Here's Dupree backing up eight yards deep in the end zone. He's going to down it there. Well, West Virginia gives over the football to Oklahoma for the fourth time today on a touchback at the 20. The three previous times Oklahoma has marched 80 yards to score. I don't know whether it's a good idea or not for West Virginia to give the ball to Oklahoma <laughs> the 20. Well, you know, it's been such an interesting contest, particularly for people who are neutral looking in. Now, the people here don't like it because they expected Oklahoma to roll over West Virginia. The talk in the hall as we take a look at the scoring drive was about uh, Hosteller comparing him to Elway, who came in here two years ago and looked so good. Oklahoma now starts with 20 again. First and 10. They got to start all over again. Kelly Phelps, who made the great touchdown run, is uh, running, throwing the option pass, and it's out of bounds incomplete. Phelps got sort of hung up and looked about trying to sprint out of there. He had Carter breaking for the sideline pattern. And on the rollout, another West Virginia player shaken up. The tremendous heat here, a factor, although we did not get the 100 degrees that uh, some had feared they might get. As a matter of fact, there's been a little breeze today, the temperature around 90, which might put it up in the middle 90s on the playing field itself. With the super turf down below, you get a little extra heat. So that has brought on some extra cramps, I'm sure. And it's been a problem for West Virginia team that has been practicing pretty much in cool weather. Saturday night of the fights. That's something that all fight fans enjoy watching on ESPN. Well, let me tell you about the one that's coming your way Saturday, September 18th from uh, Los Angeles. Raphael Bazooka Lyman and Chung Il Choi will take on each other in a junior lightweight bout 15 rounder as ESPN's big name boxing continues. Uh, Choi, by the way, lost to then champion Navarrete this past February in a 13 round knockout in the Philippines. He's now ranked number four by the WBC. Of course, Lyman ranked number one. So that'll be quite a battle. And it's all yours on ESPN with Sal Marchiano and Al Bernstein, September 18th, 8.30 Eastern Time, 5.30 Pacific. The guy who was injured is another down lineman, Jimmy Merritt's the middle guard. Uh, Got to believe that he will return. The one big injury that uh, happened to the Mountaineers early in the first period, their outstanding All-American tackle, Campbell. Here's a look at Merritt as he is coming out. I said I thought he re would return. Now that he's walking, I'm not so sure he will. That thing looks awful tender. As we were talking, uh, Jim uh, Campbell, a very good football player, has not returned at all. 27-21 our score with 8.46 remaining in the third period. Well, Ledbetter's been the top man for Oklahoma. Number 43, the fullback, Stanley Wilson, who had been the fullback for three years for Oklahoma, had a great career, over 2,000 yards gain in rushing, has to be moved to halfback, is running at left half. Right half on the wing now is Chet Winter, set in the slot. Two wide receivers. Oklahoma may have to open it up. Here's the reverse pin, and Phelps is thrown, but uh, uh, for a loss back at the 15-yard line. And boy, the happy Mountaineers have come through again. A that was job once Dave again. Oblak, right? Right, and he got some help from Rich Walters as they have just done an excellent job. Walters, the junior, 6'1", who has really been impressive, took over when Campbell did go down. Oklahoma, third and long. They don't like to be in this situation. They have run the option 
using some motion. Let's see what uh, Don Nealon counters with here as he sends in a substitution. Dave Preston is in, so they'll go with their 5-2 defense. All right, Phelps is five out of 11 on third downs. Phelps is dropping back. Third down play throws a little screen play over the left side. Got some blockers over there, and he's got the first down, I believe. Up over the 31-yard line. Phelps, and that was quite a call. A delayed screen to the left side. Caught over there uh, by Ledbetter. And it's good for first down. What an effort by a third string center, Paul Fair, number 55, as he gets over, makes a block, and then buries the defensive end once again. And here comes Ledbetter, number 24, is able to hold his ground and get the chores done. That's Reggie Armstead. Good call once again by Galen Hall. That's the sixth time today that Kelly Phelps has picked up a third down play. Number seven. Running a good game, gives to his fullback, Ledbetter, stacked up around the 33. Gain of a couple, maybe, not much more. West Virginia giving more grudgingly now up the middle in its defense. They were really vulnerable early on in the game. It looked like Oklahoma might make, they make this a runaway. They jumped off in front 14 0. Had uh, sort of a medium easy field goal try that was tipped, and from that time on, West Virginia has taken heart. 27 21, West Virginia leading. A little gloom gathering over there, a lot of tension on the Oklahoma sidelines, I'm sure. The Sooners pick number one by one authority this year, as high as third by some other. There's the quick pitch. They get it back, though, to Wilson, and he's going to be taken down around the 38 yard line. Crowd didn't like it. They thought he was roughed up. I'll tell you who was roughed up is Kelly Phelps, as uh, they had a crash on that time. West Virginia continues to stay in that 6 1 defense or 4 3, whatever you want to call it. And Chuck Harris just punched his ticket. A legal hit, nothing dirty about it. Third down and short once again. Last time they were in a uh, short yarded situation, they came with the option on the left side. Well, in comes the play. Now Paul Cluis, who alternates with David Carter at split in, brings in the word from uh, Barry Switzer. Third down, they need about three. There's rolling on third down pass play. Caught by Cluis. First down of the 48. Paul Cluis, the sophomore from Oklahoma City, number 82, makes the catch. And Oklahoma's drive continues alive here with over six minutes to go in the third quarter. It's really hard to get tendencies on Oklahoma because that's the third short yardage situation they face in this half. They've done something different every time. They threw a short screen once. They came with the option. This time was just straight sprint out. Phelps impressive throwing on the left side. He set that back foot at 90 degrees and got it done. Oklahoma's run the rushing so many times there's a reverse option now the pitch out and there's a great tackle over here by Greg McGowan stops the play can you believe that pitch out West Virginia makes the play but I got to look at this one again this is a new pitch out <laughs> you talk about did, a good athlete how did Chet Winters ever catch this ball and what a great defensive play by Greg McGowan this is the one-handed pitch. I mean, that takes upper body strength. And you don't think Kelly Phelps is an athlete? Nice play by West Virginia, but I guarantee it. That's about a 7 to 10-yard pitch by Phelps. It's sort of backhanded at that. Now Switzer down to his right knee as Oklahoma now faces second down and 13 from about their own 45. Tight end, Fontenet switches over. They give it to the fullback and cracking through. There goes Sledbetter over the 50 and into the West Virginia 48. But it'll be a third down coming up now and a good six or seven yards to go for Oklahoma. Did a good job blocking the inside of that 4-3 even set that time. Steve Williams, Paul Parker, and Paul Fair were able to get the chores done. Well, Dennis folks, and Dean. Dennis folks in there too. Number 50 made the stop. How many great linebackers you can think of from West Virginia? Sam Huff, Chuck Halley. Well, here's another one on the inside, Dennis Folks. Third and seven for yeah. Oklahoma. Phelps on third down, sideline, incomplete. Fourth down, the Sooners now have run out of uh, their drive here as it stalls around the West Virginia 48. So they'll try to put the Mountaineers back deep in the hole and buy their time with five minutes to go in the third quarter and West Virginia leading by six points, 27 to 21. They've been trying to set up this middle return, which is really an exciting return in college football. This time it definitely will be a return. Let's see if they go up the middle. That's one of the easier ways to uh, find the seam and break something. One safety man back for West Virginia as Keeling wastes a punt. And it's not a good kick off the side of his foot and goes out of bounds and it's going to be marked up field around the 22 yard line. So they get West Virginia back to 22 but had hoped to put it much deeper than that. 
Mountaineers take over, and Jeff Hostetler will bring his aerial circus onto the field again. Hostetler, who's had a bevy of receivers today, Willie Drury, Daryl Miller, Wayne Brown, he's thrown to his backs. Now the fans are getting a little bit restless. Things are not going well here on the reservation with 4.53 to go in the third period. West Virginia leads 27 and 21. Hostetler on the straw play. Up the middle, tailback walls at. Stopped around the 33 or 34. That's a pretty good chunk of game. They're using that counter draw instead of running off the right side. They're taking advantage of how quick Oklahoma is. Oklahoma just flies with the football. I remember coming down here with Eddie Crowder once uh, running a, a counter, and that's all you could run against Oklahoma. They were that quick. Now they brought the big play man in. Daryl Miller is coming in. He's flanked out to the short side on the left, the bottom of your screen, number 81. Oklahoma will have to watch him. Now they switch the strong side to the right. Back to the eye. And now they throw the, tore the screen, thrown out of bounds. That was a smart play by Hosteller because Oklahoma had smelled the screen and Hosteller just threw it away. <laughs> they definitely had smelled the screen and Hosteller really shows you something, Jim. This is the guy who had to sit out a year after he transferred, played for Joe Paterno at Penn State, had to wait his turn because they had a pretty good football player last year by the name of Oliver Luck. And now what a beginning he has had and uh, the Mountaineer fans didn't really know what to expect from this guy. I think uh, they can expect a great deal. Well, the fans around Holes Apple, Pennsylvania have known about Jeff Hosteller. Here it is, third down and four for West Virginia. They run the draw. Tail back, and Curlin back won't make it. Stop short of the first down, Oklahoma jubilant. The Sooners have dug in to hold them cold. And West Virginia will have to give back the football with four minutes to go in the third quarter. Tom Benson was really something that time as he smelled the draw and got the job done. His mother had some big decisions a year ago which ball game to go to because another son played for Oklahoma State. He's graduated. Now Mrs. Benson watches Thomas play. Well, no one believed West Virginia was for real until they played the Peach Bowl last year. Well, maybe they'll believe it now. Well, win or lose this game, they have played well. Block punt by Oklahoma. This could be a touchdown. And it is taken in for a score. Oklahoma makes the big play. The guy who got it done is number 16, Daryl Sanji, the punter, mishandled the football, just wasn't able to get a handle on it. And Sanji just came right from the left side. Stanberry gets start. the touchdown. Keith Stanberry grabbed the loose ball, went on in to score. Let's watch it again. All right, watch how the punt is mishandled by the kicker. Number 16, Sanji gets the block right there. And then Stanbury picks it up, and Oklahoma lets its defense tie this thing up. They got a chance to take the lead. 27 to 27, big defensive play by the Sooners. Boy, what an offensive fireworks we've had here today, and this time a big defensive play. And as Michael Keeling to try the point after, it's blocked and remain tied. Well, West Virginia comes up with a big play, and the score remains deadlocked at 27 27. Well, let's watch the punt play again with three and a half minutes to go. Robertson was just a little slow getting it off. Sanji blocks it coming from the outside, and the fullback makes the block on him. And then Stanbury picks it up and runs in the end zone. The score, however, is still tied because number 70, guy we've been talking about all day long, Chuck Harris blocked the extra point. Can you believe this ball game? No, Jimmy this Packer? has been an incredible ball game to open the 1982 season, and you'll see action throughout the entire campaign here on ESPN. Coming up with great teams, uh, Notre Dame throughout the year on ESPN. You'll see Michigan, Penn State, Alabama, Southern California, all the great teams, and the NCAA. And one of the great ones here today, Oklahoma with its hands full against West Virginia. The scrappy Mountaineers. Well, they're hoping for just a little bit of heaven here today. That's their phrase back home. They'll have uh, another chance to get the ball here. Back deep for West Virginia. Willie Drury, who's had a great day running back kicks and kicking off for Oklahoma will be Michael Keeley. Most close games are decided by the kicking game, and it's been very important today. A blocked field goal, a blocked extra point, a blocked punt. Willie Drury is waiting back for uh, West Virginia. 
All tied at 27 and 27. It's going to be a short kick and a fair catch call for by Beck. That's a smart play at the 22 yard line. Fair catch on the kickoff, and Beck takes it on the 22 with those linemen bearing down. Well, Jimmy, we've talked about how well coached the special teams are for West Virginia. That is a very intelligent play. Here's the crowd getting involved. They want that defense to get going. Hostetler is number 15. He'll be the key. Well, this is a vaunted Oklahoma defense led by the great Rick Bryan and the fine pair of linebackers and Thomas Benson and Jackie Ship. Jeff Hostetler is out there for West Virginia with Walzak and Zop. His two running backs wide to the left side comes Wayne Brown. Off the right is Rich, Rich Hollins. And here's the tight end, Mark Rowell, their All American candidate. Deep handoff, thrown for a loss. John Truitt crashed in that time on Walzak and smothered him for a loss. So maybe inside the 20 yard line. This is a pretty good football player. He put on 15 pounds over the summer lifting weights. Vastly improved over a year ago. And they look for big things out of Truett. He's 6'3", 220, just a junior. And now Oklahoma appears to be the aroused team as Barry Switzer's got a fire put under the Sooners who were outplayed by well underheralded West Virginia in the first, second quarter. Fake handoff. Hostetler down the middle. And it is incomplete. Trying to hit a post power rather a goal post pattern to number 19 Wayne Brown it's good coverage six red shirts around the football that time the way you play zone coverage you settle down into a basketball stance and then when the ball is thrown you break hard to the ball and that's exactly what the Sooner defense uh, secondary did well now here's the Sooner defense has West Virginia right where they want them it's third and long back deep in a hole in the 19 yard line it is third down and 14. And Gary Mullen, a sophomore, a speedster's in at one spot. And Rich Holland's on the left. Hofstetler, pressure on him. Hofstetler fires, and it is broken up. Almost picked off down here by Jackie Ship. Jackie Ship, the splendid linebacker from Stillwater. Now listen to the crowd now. Jackie Ship had a chance to run this in all the way. Good coverage and good pressure. Everybody keeps their passing lane, particularly Rick Bryan. Hosteller, kind of a heave ho and hope pass. And Jackie Shipp, there's a story on him. One of the great ones to play here, and he's just a junior. Well, Last time, Robertson was very slow kicking the football. Had it blocked for a touchdown. That allowed Oakland to get back even. This time, he gets the kick away. Coming up now is uh, Case. Case out there, 42, 45, away from one tackler, and then hit down hard around the 46. Oklahoma in excellent field position now. Near midfield will take over and the score tied 27 25. Sometimes you can just feel the electric movements of the game. And now you can feel things swinging toward Oklahoma. Uh, let's see what happens. Right now, top ranked boxing is on half for you. September 16th, a great card coming to you on ESPN from the Sands Hotel, Atlantic City. James brought against Eddie Mack will be the featured heavyweight final in that one. 12 rounds. Don't miss it on your. Total Sports Network ESPN. First down play Oklahoma. Kelly Phelps on the keep. Kelly Phelps racked hard as he crosses midfield, but he's into the West Virginia 49. Phelps made one of the big plays when on the quarterback keep scored on fourth down and two and a half. And then Oklahoma came back with another great uh, big play on a block punt by Daryl Sanji and a touchdown score by Keith Stanbury. One of the nice things about the wishbone is that you have uh, uh, nine people and you're going to block them with ten. And that's what Barry Switzer tries to do. And that's exactly what happened that time. Good yardage. Second down and five. Fullback has got it. And he is tracking through there. Almost breaking it. Fred Sims, sophomore from Tucson. They say he may be the best fullback on the Oklahoma team, but I tell you, Weldon Ledbetter shown a lot here today. First down, Oklahoma. Sooners rolling now with less than two minutes to go in the third period. That's the strength of this ball club. They have tremendous depth and talent at running back. Question mark has been the offensive line, but they've performed well today. I haven't seen them make very many mistakes. Just been a case that West Virginia has come out and done a very good job. Now will the heat become a problem here for West Virginia? Here is Kelly looking. Going down for the long one. It is incomplete. Thrown out of bounds. Pretty good coverage down there by little Tim Agee. But it was intended downfield, but thrown out of bounds. 
You gotta There's love A.G., just a little guy, 134 left. A.G.'s 5'11", they list him at 175, you kind of question that. He will stick you, he's had some very good hits in this football game, and they're counting on him for a big year. Coming in for uh, West Virginia, as they make a few moves, Art Ash, number 31. I guess he left the tennis court for a while to come over and play. Well, Rod Rodriguez <laughs> is also in replacing A.G. They're looking for a pass here from Oklahoma, second and 10. The 41, they uh, give it instead to the fullback, Sims. Sims gets a pretty good run up the middle, dashes down to the 35-yard line. Picks up close to six yards on the play. It'll be third down and four. That's the score, all tied here at Norman's Owen Field in Oklahoma. Kent Dennis Folks on the stop, by the way, and he's played a stout game today for the Mountaineers. What a great job all day long by Paul Parker, 62, and Paul Fair, the center. They doubled down on Dave Oblack and permitted the big game. Now the third down call now for Kelly Phelps. Phelps uh, giving up to his left halfback, and this time he won't make it. Little handback play to Stanley Wilson, and they stuffed him pretty good. He was able to spin away and get additional uh, yardage. Little linebackers, there they are for West Virginia, very active. Well, they do a job. We've talked so much about number 50, uh, Dennis Folks, and Dave Preston has been very effective also. They'll measure this one. It looks about, uh, well, maybe a half a yard short. Well, let's wait and see. No, it's a first, first down. down. Great second effort by Stanley Wilson, did it? Oklahoma's drive is still alive with 46 seconds to go in the third period. And the score tied 27-27 is what's been a whale of a game. Underdog West Virginia has come back uh, after falling behind 14-0 and played Oklahoma to a standstill at the moment. This time they put Cluis out on the sidelines to the left side. A first down. Let's see what Phelps does out of the wishbone. Phelps, fullback, Sims running straightened up, and then he's taken down pretty hard. Dave O'Black looked like he might have gotten in there first. And then uh, Ernie Anderson. Ernie Anderson did an excellent job. We'll see where he came from. He is the nose guard, and Ernie Anderson moved out and uh, had a fine hit to get the chores done. Maybe the end of the third period before they can get off another play as we watch it again. Take a look at Dr. Death, 76. This is Williams blocking inside. You see somebody firing out right there and rolling at the legs. And that's the end of the third period. Our score is 27 all. Well, we do have quite a dandy here going in Norman today to open 1982 for these two. Going the final period, Oklahoma, West Virginia, all tied. Well, there are 15 minutes to go for Barry Switzer and Don Nealon. Two different uh, situations here. Barry Switzer, for the last decade, among the nation's winningest coaches, Don Nealon, just getting things started at West Virginia. Had a great second year last year at Morgantown. And we're all tied going to the final period. And there is a give up the middle to the fullback. Sims, who's taken over for Ledbetter to give him a little bit of a rest. And it'll be spotted about the 26 and a half to call it the 27 yard line. West Virginia twice had come into Norman and they've just been blown out. 47 or something, 52 to 10 the last time they were here. Don Neal said one time, we may lose, but I don't think it'll be that. Well, it isn't that at the moment. A long way to go, though. Oklahoma, the wind at its back here in the fourth and final period. Now here's a quick pitch on the outside, and that'll go for a loss. Wilson that time could not turn the corner and he is thrown back at the 28 yard line. Reggie Armstead did a great job. You know, uh, you're pointing out that West Virginia's come in here and gotten shelled. Barry Switzer tried to warn everybody that Don Nealon has done a tremendous job and do not take this ball club lightly. I'm not sure a lot of people believe him. They believe him now. There's a good look at Wilson. Was a fullback a year ago. Now the halfback. Apparently we'll have an Oklahoma field goal attempt. Well, this will try to break the tie. It'll be a try of 46 yards, the 36-yard line. Remember, Keeling will have the wind at his back. Shoe off, and here's the kick, and it is long enough, and it is wide, I believe. No good. Wide left. Keeling misses, 
And so the score remains tied, and West Virginia has again stopped Oklahoma. They'll take over the ball at the line of scrimmage around the 30-yard line. That's the danger with a soccer-style kicker. You tend to hook them, and uh, Keeling doesn't get it up very fast. The ball is flat, and that's why the one was blocked near, uh, or I should say, after the 27th point by Harris. So West Virginia takes over. They've got decent field position at the 29, going into the win with Hostetler. Well, West Virginia gave Eastern football a big boost last year, and now they have that newfound confidence. 27 and 27. They switch the tight end to the left side. And here's the double fake, Hostetler. Hostetler flying down the sidelines, and it is incomplete. You can almost see the wind blowing that ball back, and the receiver down there, Willie Drew, or uh, Rich Rollins, no, oh, it is uh, Wayne Brown. Brown tried to double back and catch it. The defensive player not watching the ball was watching the defender. Well, there's the time of possession in the three quarters so far. Oklahoma ran up a good part of its 12 minute edge in the first period. West Virginia's 16 minutes has come in the last two quarters. And so, although the Sooners have an edge there of 13 minutes about, the score remains tied. Jimmy, you can see from that last play just uh, what a factor the wind is going to be in this last period for West Virginia going into it. The coverage was beat that time. Hosteller just couldn't uh, get the football to him. He was going to his left. That isn't easy, but the wind is really swirling. An eligible receiver. That's lost a down this year, so it's second down and 15. Hosteller over the middle. Got his man Drury, who is really slammed down hard, but the completion gets back the yards lost in the penalty, plus a couple of three extra bonuses. And it'll be third down about eight or nine. Good football player made the tackle. Daryl Sanji. This was the guy who was suspended, had some disciplinary problems a year ago, but he's a good practice player. His attitude is good. He's very aggressive and tough. He's the reason that Oklahoma is tied up with West Virginia. He blocked the punt in the third period. Don Nealon on the West Virginia sidelines. Did an outstanding job coaching in his alma mater, Bowling Green. And now he's taking over West Virginia. Again, they shift the eye. Tailback is Curlin Beck. Here's the pass down the sidelines. There's Mullen. Can't get it. Thrown out of bounds anyway. Incomplete. Fourth down for West Virginia. Now the Mountaineers will have to punt into this pretty stiff breeze here at Norman. And a tie score. And Oklahoma expects to get the ball somewhere around their 35 or 40 yard line at least. That was good coverage that time as the strong safety Dwight Drain came over to fill the back half of the zone. And as you point out, Jim, Oklahoma should get excellent position. Robertson's got to get the kick off quick. He was very slow, the one that was blocked, and then he fumbled the snap, which hurt him even more. All right, here's Greg Robertson waiting back. Low snap. This time, not much of a rush, and he puts a really high one up. Beauty. Case is back, and Case is going to call for a fair catch at the 29-yard line. So Robertson did a great job that time against the win. Oklahoma will start from its 29. That's where West Virginia began a moment ago. And it's first and 10 for the Sooners with a tie score. Jimmy, you know the one thing we have not seen today, when something we had looked for a great deal, is a fumble by uh, Oklahoma. They uh, fumbled four, have fumbled four times, but they haven't lost one. And that's the one thing Don Nealon was counting on, is to get some turnovers. It just hasn't happened. Barry Switzer is the first to admit, we do fumble the football. The key is to fumble in the right places, jump on it, be alert, and they've done that today. All right, they have Ledbetter and Wilson set in there behind Kelly Phelps. Phelps with room to the sidelines. It is caught over there and out of bounds. Might have been uh, Carter. It was David Carter, number 89. It's a nice gain on the play. It might be another first down. I like Carter's tools. He's 6'1", 192, a sophomore from Aldous, Oklahoma. He's not extremely fast, Irv. Uh, but probably has the best hands of any of the receivers. Certainly runs great routes, and there was an example. Well, one of the things that he does, watching him before the game, he looks the ball into his hands. He's been well coached. Of course, they have good football in Oklahoma. I'm talking about high school. In fact, the high school football all over the country is just improving constantly. First down, Oklahoma. Give to the fullback. Led better. Cracks into that West Virginia defense, which now is bending a little bit less than it did earlier in the game. This time, they'll mark it on the 43 for a gain of three, second and seven. Now that is uh, Fred Sims. Wind may be getting a little bit stiffer, and that's going to be to the advantage of Oklahoma here in the fourth period. They have the wind right at their backs. Well, Sims remains at fullback. And uh, that's uh, fake to Sims, and then Kelly Phelps tried to follow him right through the hole, and West Virginia would have nothing of that. They stack him up after a pickup of maybe a yard 
two of the most. Let's see, they put it down the 45. It'll be third down and five from that point. Well, you have to be impressed with what West Virginia is doing. The tackle at time by 70. Chuck Harris has been a tower of strength, but Don Nealon has stayed with that 4-3 most of the day. That's not easy to do when you're basically a five-man front football team, but he said he was going to do some things to try and confuse Oklahoma, and the 4-3 has, has been very effective. Well, Phelps has converted on five of, or seven of 15 third down plays. Here's Wilson motion and Phelps giving to his fullback Sims. He'll not get this one. Sims is uh, runs right into the waiting arms of West Virginia defenders and they throw him back short of a first down and Oklahoma after getting one first down is stopped on its drive but the Sooners will have the advantage of the win here and that might well be the factor that will tip the difference in a tie ball game down the final 11 minutes of this contest. Right side is overloaded. Let's see if they go after the punter. Six people on the right side. Keeling back waiting for Oklahoma. It's not. Oh, he does fumble the ball, but he gets off the kick. And here is a catch taken out on the 25 yard line. No fair catch call for. Had West Virginia been in an all out rush that time, they might have come up with something. Well, I got to believe that Don Nealon is very upset with what went on because normally one and, and most of the time two people go after the punter, even if you got a return on. This thing should have been blocked. Apparently somebody just missed an assignment and Wheeling is able to get the ball off. It goes to West Virginia though. The Mountaineers will take it at their 26. One uh, 11 minutes and 19 seconds remaining. West Virginia has come in here as a decided underdog against Oklahoma and they battle them even terms up to this point here in the fourth period. Hostetler on the quick one. The look in trying to go to Daryl Miller right off his fingertips might have been zipped with a little bit too much fire. Oklahoma just defying them to run the football now. They've dropped both defensive ends off now. They're stacking them and they're just going with a three man rush. Normally they're a five two football team. Occasionally one end will drop off. We've seen them drop two off now the last two times. They want them to uh, run the football and defying them. Well second down and ten coming up. The figures on Jeff Hostetler in his first start for West Virginia. He's at 12 out of 29 for 247 yards. A couple of touchdowns. Gives the fullback. Zap, zap, uh, finding some room. Plows up over the 30. Halted around the 32. Good call against the three man front. They blocked it pretty well. Billy Leg had an excellent block on the middle guard, John Blake. Jerry Sanders, 45, made that stop. Might have been starting for a lot of teams in America. Just happened to be here playing linebacker with a couple of call Thomas Benson and Jackie Ship. Maybe the finest pair ever to come in the same year for Oklahoma at that position. All right, it is a big play for West Virginia. Third down and three with a tie score 27 27. West Virginia needs to get out of the field position they're in with a win against them. Oklahoma defense set to tee off. And here's a pass over the middle. It is caught by Walzak for first down. Mickey Walzak came out of the backfield up the middle and makes the catch. And it's a first down for West Virginia. He hasn't seen that much action since the first period. He's probably the best pass receiver coming out of the backfield. Vance Carlson gives a signal. Nice little circle pattern. 10:30 remaining in our ball game. It's tied at 27. Neither team has put up much of a sustained drive here in the second half. Oklahoma scored its uh, touchdown, a block punt. Now Hostetler is shouting something here over to Daryl Miller. He wants Miller wide on the right side, Mullen on the left. And here's Hosteller. Penalty flag is down. Hosteller stings the ball. Almost intercepted. Boy, Oklahoma almost picked that one off. Intended downfield. And there was Stanbury, the strong safety. Almost got it with 10 minutes to go. End the game and a tie score. All right, we do have a penalty, but let's take a look at the secondary playing straight zone on the play action. Stanbury, number 19, right there. The second man comes in, has an excellent opportunity, unable to uh, hang on to the football right at the 50-yard uh, line. Let's see what the call is. Vance Carlson talking to Oklahoma, so it'll be against West Virginia. I thought it was motion by the flanker. That's what it was. Legal procedure. Oklahoma will refuse the penalty, and it's second down and 10. Over 250 yards now in the air for Jeff Hostetler from Holes Apple, Pennsylvania was starting for Penn State then became alternate uh, quarterback with uh, black legs. He didn't like the alternating thing. He became disgruntled with the litany line. So he transferred to nearby Morgantown and West Virginia. They're old rivals. And later this year they have a chance to play against Penn State. 
second down play. A blitz on. Here's the screen. A good call against the blitz. And they've got the wall sack over the 45 to the 47 and close to a first down. They really set that up nice. Got a good block from Kurt Keel. Mark Rao did his job. They cleared it out. Hosteller continues to impress as he just threw the, the screen to 42 Walzak. Here it is. Watch him set it up. They do a very fine job of hitting first. They lock out pretty good. Set it up. Excellent uh, fakery there. And Walzak is able to pick up good yardage. So we've got another third and short, Jimmy. What do you call here? Third and one. You got to think you're going to give it to your best back over your best lineman. That would be the normal thing, but you're playing Oklahoma, and you don't always push the Sooners around, so let's see what happens. Tell you what I go with is a quarterback sneak. It takes the middle backer out of there. They give it to Zop, and Zop's got the first down. He cracks in a seam right to the 49-yard line. Let's talk about that for a minute. There's so many good middle linebackers, both in the collegiate and professional ranks. They line up a couple yards deep. They just anticipate, and they stack them up high. If you run the sneak, they don't have a chance to do it. In this case, it doesn't matter as West Virginia keeps the drive going. We have 9.06 remaining. Well, they run right at Rick Bryan. Sometimes that's the way to play against a great player, and... Uh, Brian was at the bottom of the stack, but Zop get in to pick up the first down of the 49. So West Virginia now getting in a good field position. This is the second first down in a row, and now they're near the midfield stripe. Mullen goes in motion. Big draw. And they're going deep, and it is caught at the 10-yard line. What a catch that is down there by West Virginia's Rich Hollins. Rollins makes the Hollins makes the catch, and it is first and goal for West Virginia. All he did is beat Scott Case and Keith Stanberry. Talk about an effort as uh, Hostetler just threw it, and number 88 was able to go up between two people. This is the home run threat to Hollins. He's averaging 20 yards a catch, that is, he did last year. He was a track man in high school. Good coverage by the Sooners into the wind. The ball hangs. This is excellent coverage by the Sooners, but Hollins wins the battle. Could be the biggest catch of the game. Boy, His right ball into club a is right there now. Three defenders in the herb, and that has put Hostetler over 300 yards through the air, and Barry Switzer has reason to mop his brow here as with a tie score, West Virginia's first and goal at the Oklahoma 9. Boy, sometimes these can be tough yards, though. Hofstetler throws in the end zone, and it is incomplete. He had the man there. Mullins was wide open. Gary Mullen was there, and there's Hofstetler holding his head in self-reproach. Oh, he was there. Well, he really had him because Mullins used reverse motion to get open, and Hofstetler's been near perfect today. That time, he missed the touchdown. They'll come back with another play. What do you do here? I tell you, you get in for three, which you would assume they could do because they've got a good field goal kicker. They're close, but you're playing Oklahoma, a ball club that can take it up and down the field with the best of them. You know Don Nealon is thinking, get that seven and then let that defense take over. While well, Hollins and Wayne Brown, two fresh wide receivers, are coming on for West Virginia. They've got a confused uh, confusion here. They need a timeout. Now they're going to have to take one of the three times out right here. So it's timeout for West Virginia. They'll have two left of the game on the tie score, 27-27. The Mountaineers knocking when we come back. Well, a lot of uh, pressure here, perhaps, on Jeff Hosteller, but he's got a lot of pressure on Oklahoma. Irv, what do you think? He really does. I believe they'll go to Walzak. They just put him in the football game. He is their best receiver coming out of the backfield. There is uh, number three, and we're talking about Paul Woodside, who uh, may have to be called upon to kick a field goal, possibly to kick an extra point. He does have the nine points today. He's been extremely tough. Let's see what Don Nealon comes up with. Big Ball moment is, right here, Jimmy. Yep. Second down, you're playing Oklahoma, coming into one of the toughest places in America to win. Barry Switzer's never lost a home opener. Barry Switzer, the winningest coach in America. What is it, 87%? It's incredible. West Virginia has been taking it to him. Let's see if they go to uh, Walzak. He's on the left side, well, now they, in motion. They got three wide receivers on the right. Hostetler in the end zone, wide open, touchdown. Oh, what a beautiful play. It is hit in there to Wayne Brown. And West Virginia has broken the tie to go ahead by six. 
Hostetler sent three wide receivers to right side plus the tight end, and there were too many for Oklahoma to cover. Here's Walzak in motion. They just flood the zone, and Hostetler finds the man. He'll throw back against the grain. Watch his footwork as he'll set that right foot, throws against the body a little bit. This kid can throw on the run. West Virginia has just been outstanding. Hostetler well over 300 yards, a very important extra point. 33-27 it certainly is. And a try for the point now is Woodside. And here's the kick. He gets it up. And it's a seven-point lead for the first time in the game for West Virginia. Their biggest lead have been six. But uh, now that one point could be a crucial decision maker later on. Eight minutes to go. West Virginia 34, Oklahoma 27. Wow, there's a great hush here over Owen Field right now. Oklahoma trails by seven. Waiting is Marcus Dupree, the great freshman. is taken instead by Wilson. At the 10, 15, the 20, and then he is slammed down hard to the turf at the 22-yard line. Oklahoma will be 78 yards away from what now would be a tie in this game as West Virginia has gone ahead 37-20, 34-27. How about those precocious Mountaineers? Well, they've done a great job, and of course, give credit to Hollins. There's a story on the scoring drive. Hollins had the great catch between three defenders, and then Hostetler, after missing an easy touchdown, came right back. He found Wayne Brown in the end zone as they flooded the zone. Just been an outstanding uh, effort by West Virginia. The Sooners, however, are one of the most explosive teams I've ever seen. They do lead the nation in uh, in rushing year after year. Let's see what they got going. All right, Phelps. Yes, Sim still at uh, fullback. Brings this pipe half a motion. Here's a rush back on the Phelps, and now he gets off the screen to Wilson. Wilson at 15 to 20. 30 yard line. Put down a good open field tackle to 35. Another great play by Kelly Phelps, who eluded. A charge by the West Virginia Blitz and got his pass off to Wilson just in the nick of time. Excellent move. Wilson, of course, can really hurt you. Seventh all-time leading rusher, and there have been some great ones here. I don't think I've ever seen a better football player than on this field, Billy Sims, combining power and speed. I've seen more powerful runners, quicker runners, but never combining that. You know, we're going to be picking the outstanding player of the game a little later, but how about these two quarterbacks? Have they not performed today? They really have. Here's one in, on the move Felt, right here. Oh, should have been intercepted almost. Oh, boy, Anthony Daniels had a line on that one and a clear sailing down the sideline. Number eight, a sophomore from Cleveland, Ohio. Well, Anthony's a little upset with himself. He's 6'2", 200. Greg McGowan got the start ahead of him, and then Daniels did come in midway in the uh, second period. There's Barry Switzer. He's got a great deal to be concerned about. His ball club has been behind many times. They have the ability to make up ground because they do believe in themselves. They have 734 left to make up a seven point lead. And Jimmy, quite frankly, if they don't get that block punt, they're out of this thing. Well, they've had a, that's right. They've got a lot of pride and tradition here though in Oklahoma. Started back, of course, I guess when our own Bud Wilkinson here in the 1950s. And since then, Oklahoma's won 150 games and lost only 25. That's a remarkable record over those years. Second down and 10. And they run the option. Phelps keeps, runs into one of his own players and drops down. Looked like he ran into the back of one of his own blockers. And uh, down he goes around the 37-yard line. Well, the guy who really made that play was Rich Wallers by stringing it out because Phelps wanted to go outside. But Wallers does a good job. There he is on the left of the screen. He just uh, makes him uh, string it out a little bit. Number 38, Preston, who's played very well. We keep hearing so much about the uh, middle linebacker, number 50, Folks, and Tally, but Preston has distinguished himself today. Boy, here's a big play. Third down and eight for Oklahoma. Looking for the pass is West Virginia upfield. It is broken up, incomplete. It'll be fourth down for Oklahoma. They wanted Paul Cloyce in the crowd, and another fine stop up there by West Virginia's little guy, Tim Agee. Well, you pointed it out. Let's give credit to that little guy. Number 44 coming off. He isn't very big, and those of you looking in who want to play football, you don't have a lot of size. If you have a lot of heart and run to the football as he does, you can do it. Keeling comes on the field now again to punt. He had a long one of 78 yards against Kansas. He has the wind at his back right here. They do have an excellent uh, fake out of punt formation. Don't Here's know if he'll use it here. Willie Drury is back waiting. Oh, this time they keep him honest, and a fine driving kick. Drives Drury back inside the 10. He's going to let it go, and wisely so. It's in the end zone for a touchback. West Virginia's ball of the 20. Well, that was a fine pressure job by Keeling. Six minutes, 48 seconds. It's a lot of time, but if West Virginia now can pick up about three first downs, it's going to be an interesting finish. 
Okay, while we're waiting for that to get back underway, we'll remind you of the Canadian Football League action. It's Winnipeg against Ottawa, Saturday, September 18th, and they couldn't be any wilder up there than we've had here. I don't think so. The only thing we don't have is two people going in motion, but you can see that coming up up in uh, Canadian football. Love it. Saturday, September 18th, 1.30 p.m. Eastern Time. West Virginia now back to the attack. Let's see if Hostetler with a seven point lead keeps the ball on the ground. Yep, gives his fullback zap and he cracks for a pretty good gain up close to the 25. Jimmy, you point that out. Do you do that? You've uh, gotten to you, to, you've gotten the lead, I should say, by throwing the football. Do you put it on the ground and give Oklahoma back uh, the football or do you try and, and keep moving and doing the things that you've done well? Because they need some first downs. They're going to have to punt into the win. Last time, Robertson did a good job, but they really do need to keep the drive going. I don't think they can get tentative. Hostetler going against the win here in the fourth period. Clock shows six minutes, 17 seconds to go. West Virginia leads by seven. Run the draw play and breaking through here. Looks like uh, Tom Gray, Keith Stanbury. Nope, that was uh, King Harvey. King Harvey, number 33. Did a great job and got a good block from Holsington and Billy Lake. Keep in mind, we've got a long way to go, 6.07, but I know Barry Switzer, if the Sooners get the football and they come down and score, in any way in my book, he goes for one. Nope. Barry Switzer is a winner. He doesn't go for ties. That's like kissing your sister, unless she looks like Bo Derrick and as your step says, that ain't even fun, so that he'll count. go for it. First and 10. <laughs> West Virginia, an important first down. Now they got three more cracks at it here. Run out some time. And Hostetler going to the air. Sidelines, gets it tight in wow. Over and out of bounds on the 42, and that'll be another first down for West Virginia. Very safe pass. We haven't heard much from Rao, but he's been doing a good job drawing double coverage. He's a devastating blocker, and he's blocked well today. He's been a regular since his freshman year. He can make the tough catch. The only bad part about that play, I thought they went out of bounds. Nothing's bad. He stayed in bounds. The clock keeps moving. All right, it's on the 43, and it's a first down for West Virginia. I got it, Coach Simmons. I got it. 34-27, Mountaineers bidding for what would be one of the shocking upsets of the early 1982 season for sure. And Jeff Hostetler's the man who's engineered it at his first start at quarterback for West Virginia. They run the draw, give the tailback, Henry. Nothing doing this time. Oklahoma was ready for that one. Ricky Oklahoma. Bryan did the job. This is the young guy who comes to Oklahoma from a small town. Rick Broken Bryan Arrow. is from Broken Arrow. That's right. And he didn't know if he could play here. Didn't know if he could adjust and everything. I'll guarantee he can play and he can adjust. This guy is going to be a first-round pick. Well, they've had some great linemen here, of course. Uh, Weatherall, the Selman brothers. Wade Walker, who's now the athletic director here from down in Gastonia, North Carolina, was a great tackle. That's right. Uh, you Rick mentioned Bryan. Selman. He's on the staff here. Yep. Rick Bryan. They think it's going to be another. Uh, here's an all-out rush, and it's incomplete. They rushed uh, stock uh, or uh, Hostel a little bit that time. He had Hollins breaking. I think if he'd had another split second, Hollins might have been off for six points. I have to agree with you because they once again have found the seam. Every time they stunt the, the safety. Well, that's a big Neal play for Oklahoma. He's got it going here. Third Hostel. down, what do you do? Do you throw here? I got to believe you run the draw. Let's see what they do. Ten yards to go for West Virginia. Oklahoma anticipating things. The fans are coming to their feet. They're getting to cheer now. Clock shows four minutes, 38 seconds to go. Hostel has been a thorn in the side of the Sooners all day. Needs 10 yards. Hostel will go to the air. There he fires, and it is incomplete at the sidelines. Oklahoma now will get back the ball. And there's Hostel is taken down hard this time by Oklahoma. Oh, he's holding on. Looked like he's holding his left hand. Daryl Sanji was the man by covering for Oklahoma. Well, that pass, I think, might have been out of bounds anyway. Well, that will really hurt if West Virginia gets the ball back, say Oklahoma does go on and score, because Hostetler obviously is the guy. Boy, he looks like he's really in pain, and it's been that kind of a day for Don Nealon. A lot of injuries, and I'll tell you, they got a couple people working on him. Well, see, maybe if Oklahoma will go for the block here, they have blocked one. They have blocked one uh, West Virginia punt here today. And that was good for a touchdown. Right now, the ball is at the 43-yard line of West Virginia, figuring that if Woodside gets off a good uh, kick, or rather, Robertson gets off the good kick, and if they get no good return, they would have Oklahoma pretty deep. So the Sooners, with less than five minutes to go in the game, might go for the block. They're still looking over Hostetler, and there's a collective holding of breath along the West Virginia bench. 
Hostel are coming to his feet. That looks okay. Well, that's good news because, and the fans are giving him a hand. They have some sportsmanship down here. I'll tell you where all the pressure is on right now, Jimmy. Obviously, this young kicker, but assuming that he does his job. Dennis Brown is the defensive coordinator in his third year, and he's a winner for West Virginia. But you know what he's thinking now. He's got to do a job and, and uh, hang in there against Oklahoma, and he's thinking if they score, what do you do against a two-point conversion? Here's the snap. They're coming at him, but he gets off the kick. Case is back far catches call for and taken at the 27 yard line. That was the up back Steve Hayworth. Case was the deep man. So Oklahoma is at the 28. And it'll be first and 10 for the Sooners. Will it be their last time? Could be. West Virginia leads it 34 27 with 4.28 to go. It is back to work now for Oklahoma. The mighty Sooners stunned here by the West Virginia Mountaineers who caught fire in the second quarter after trailing 14 nothing. They're now leading 34 27 bidding for an upset. But this is Oklahoma and here goes Kelly Phelps. Been a hero all day. Phelps long and downfield being measured and almost intercepted by Reggie Armstead who had the best crack at it. They were intending it for Stanley Wilson. It looked like Armstead was going back like an outfielder just to make the catch. Little throwback as Wilson came out of the backfield. That's one of the things that the wishbone has always had as a very effective play. You half sprint to the right and you throw back, but Armstead did a very good job. And of course, the play isn't nearly as effective when you're behind. Irv, you can correct me here, but Oklahoma, noted for its tremendous offense, has never been known as a good comeback team because it is a running team, not a passing team. Well, I think you make a great point. The thing that's interesting, a guy like Wilson can break it so easily because he's got such great tools broken up again intended for close hey I got to tell you this uh, number eight Daniels has done a good job since he's come into the football game Anthony Daniels a sophomore from Cleveland broke up that one they wanted to go to Paul Cluis to split in on the right side there's Daniels West Virginia they'll be taking on uh, Pitt Pretty soon on October 2nd, a game scheduled to be seen on ESPN. Next week, it'll be at Maryland. Bobby Ross taking over there from uh, Jerry Claiborne. Third and 10 for Oklahoma. Talk about crucial plays. They run the option and they pitch it out to Wilson. And Wilson fighting to stay on the, the second effort. And he's out of bounds short of the first down. That second effort may give them an opportunity. I got to believe they'll go for it. Wilson did that himself. And what a call by Galen Hall or Barry Switzer, whoever came up with that when they run the straight wishbone option they on a third and long. Definitely caught West Virginia looking for the pass. And they ran the option of face mask against West Virginia. A break for Oklahoma. It'll be a first down for the Sooners with four minutes and 10 seconds to go. There's Don Nealon, and you know his thoughts now. He's close. He's four minutes and 10 seconds away from the biggest victory of his coaching career. And that face mask isn't going to help things now. Oklahoma can beat you from any place on the field. That gives the Sooners new life. They will have faced fourth down, but it's going to be first and 10 at the 41 yard line. Back on the field comes Dennis Folks for West Virginia. One of the great inside linebackers they've had. And they've had some fine ones Sam Huff, Chuck Howley. Phelps on first down to his fullback. And Sims gets very little. Tries the middle of the West Virginia line. He's taken down. The heat has not worn down West Virginia as some of the experts had figured it would do. Very definitely. Once again, not to be a broken record, Jimmy, Dennis Brown, the defensive coordinator on the sideline, is formulating what he has to do if Oklahoma does score. Because you know Barry Switzer's going for two. So there's so many things that you have to do when you're coaching. You're looking ahead. Right now, they've got to try and stop them. But if they do score, then you do a defensive two-point effort. Third down and seven. They pitch it out wide of the team. freshman, and Marcus Dupree is pulled down from behind. Dupree, a vaunted freshman, and they're trying to spring him out there because he has great speed and running ability. Well, I'll tell you what, Rich Walters has been the outstanding defensive lineman on the field for West Virginia. A lot of people would say Brian overall. I don't know, you'd get quite an argument. Walters has just been outstanding. Had to take over for Campbell. He's played uh, like a man possessed. Came off the bench when Campbell was injured in the first quarter. On third downs, Kelly Phelps and Oklahoma has converted seven times in 18 tries, and they've never faced a bigger than the now. The clock shows three minutes, 22 seconds to go. They give the football here. They could hope maybe to get it back one more time. We and have another West man down, this time for Oklahoma, Jim, on the 50-yard line. 
It's been that kind of a ball game. It's just been hard hitting clean football, but it has been hard hitting. The heat has taken a toll. We've seen several players with cramps. All right. We're going to give you now the winner of the Vitalis most valuable most outstanding player of this game and without any question it's number 15 for West Virginia's Duff Hostetler. Well this kid really came in here did a great job. Keep in mind two of those touchdown passes this half against the win. He's just been outstanding. Hostetler the red shirt the transfer from Penn State took over for Oliver Luck the greatest quarterback in the history of West Virginia. The Vitalis MVP, Jeff Hostetler. Well, our hats off and congratulations to uh, Jeff Hostetler. We've had other great performances today, notably by Kelly Phelps, of course. But Hostetler, uh, far and away, against the odds of Oklahoma here in Norman, is our winner. There's the time remaining, 322. It is third down, 8-7 uh, to go for Oklahoma. Big play for Kelly Phelps. Downfield, it is incomplete. It'll be fourth down for Oklahoma. That was intended for Paul Cloyce, and they had fine coverage by Steve Newberry, the quarterback. It's really tough to throw when you're not used to throwing. Oklahoma likes to throw play action and not drop back. You're not going to fool West Virginia now. They are uh, settling back in their zone. Well, so here's another big call. They said West Virginia wouldn't be able to continue without uh, Oliver Luck. But Jeff Hostetler's come in, and he has disputed that remark and uh, run it, done it very soundly. And any question about it. Plus, let's give Don Nealon and Dennis Brown some credit, Jim. They came in and played a 4-3 most of this football game, not the 5-2 that uh, Nealon is noted for. Nealon is from the MAC country, Mid-America, the Big Ten with uh, Michigan and, and Bo Schemichler. That's a five-man front team. They've come in here, played 4-3. It's been a very effective 4-3. Oklahoma's taken a timeout, a little over three minutes, exactly 3.06 left. What do you call here now? Fourth down, do you put it up? Do you try and go with the option with Phelps and the exciting Wilson? Very interesting well, call here for Galen Hall. Now you can also kick him deep the three minutes to go. You stop West Virginia. You get the ball back with maybe uh, a minute and a half or more to go. There's another way to think. You play uh, for a break. You give the ball here to West Virginia, the 40. Even if you stop in three plays, they're going to punch you back down close to your own end zone. Absolutely. Number seven is on the field, though. Kelly Phelps is out there. Barry Switzer is talking it over on the sideline. Apparently, uh, they're going to go for it. Boy, they need about eight. Well, they made it's a long seven, that's for sure. Phelps made one big fourth down play, scored a touchdown. So here's the play, everything riding here for Oklahoma. They're trailing by seven with three minutes and six seconds to go on his fourth down. And Phelps, he is being chased, and Phelps screen pass to Wilson, and he's going to be thrown way short. And it'll be West Virginia's ball at the 45. West Virginia, well coached here by Don Nealon, was not to be fooled. And here's the instructions now for our MVP, Vitalis MVP. That, of course, is uh, the fine uh, Jeff Holtz. Hostetler, and what a game he's played. Hostetler. He's been excellent. That was a uh, screen into the short side of the field, into the boundary. And 96, Jimmy Merritt, a guy who was hurt before, came in and made the play. Listen to the sideline mic because they're going crazy. They think they got this one. They uh, need to pick up a first down to punch it in. And, you know, it ain't over till it's uh, over. Uh, that sounds like a Yogi Berra statement, but that's true. I've seen too many Oklahoma Sooner ball clubs come back and beat you. Three minutes a long, long time. Running backs are Zop. And uh, Curlin Beck, and they give it a Zop. And up the middle fights Cam Zop, trying to get some yardage and eat off some clock. Oklahoma still has one timeout remaining, but only one. Oklahoma in the uh, second half got a touchdown out of Phelps on the uh, option. Looked like they were really going to come on quick. West Virginia fought back, and then West Virginia had a punt block. Oh, you took it in and scored. The one that is uh, apparently going to stand, or I should say at this time, is standing up right now is a touchdown pass, Hosteller to Wayne Brown, and that's the difference in this football game. Second down and 10. They run the draw. Play the back with room. 35, 30, 30, 20. And that is going to be back to score, and it's going to be all over for Oklahoma. Back on just a little draw to gain some yards. Goes all the way to score. Better than 40 yards. 42 yards for a touchdown. And now West Virginia goes ahead 40 to 27. Can you believe this in Norman? I'll tell you something. That was quite a call. They uh, moved everybody to the outside. The guards get a little false influence there and they just run up the middle. Number 20 just looks like a million bucks. This is Curlin Beck. Watch the play as they catch the guards losing their lanes. They get one good block right there by 43. Welcome. The fans are starting to boo a little bit. Curlin Beck right up the middle finds the seam. 
and it's just a cakewalk. Let's give credit once again, Jim, to number 43, Cam Zop. I said Walzak. It was Cam Zop who gave him the block, and that sprung him. I think Beck showed a little speed, too, once he got out there and got some open field. He just blazed his way in. That could be the one that put it out of reach for Oklahoma with two minutes and 14 seconds to go. 40-27, and on the field is Woodside now to try for the point after and a 14-point lead. Well, Oklahoma has not been defeated in an opening game since Notre Dame did it in 1966. Oh, let's see. Now, that was the last time they were shut out. They have won 13 consecutive home games. I guess Northwestern beat them here. Well, I believe that opening was the game. last time. And that was uh, back in the 1960s, so it's been a long, long spell for uh, teams coming in here to Owen Field. What side waiting? Our right, West Virginia's had a very small following here from Morgantown because Oklahoma sells this 75,000 seat type stadium just about completely out with its own adherents. Here's the snap and the kick up. And it's a 14 point lead for West Virginia. Mountaineers 41 and Oklahoma 27. We started out, Jim. West Virginia was down 14 to nothing so fast, couldn't believe it. Uh, Oklahoma just came out smoking and got the job done. We saw Steve Sewell run all over the field in the first period, but they didn't give up. They didn't quit. They blocked that field goal. That seemed to get them going. Well, now you start thinking, Irv Brown, how seriously do you take West Virginia? You know, Oklahoma's got a fine program. They expect to have a great team this year. Barry Switzer had accumulated a fine array. There are the West Virginia fans. Boy, are they happy. But how seriously do you take West Virginia on the national scene? Well, uh, listen, I got to believe that they're going to be ranked very high because this is quite a program down here at Oklahoma. The thing that has to be so gratifying for Don Nealon is the performance of Hostetler. He's been un unreal. Just one of the better performances you've seen. And Jack Elway came in here and was outstanding. Now people will be comparing the two. On right, about two or three weeks, Foge Fazio is going to have to send his Pittsburgh Panthers. They may be number one against the same team. That'll be interesting. And also scheduled for ESPN. Okay, Stanley Wilson, Marcus Dupree are back deep. And it's going to be taken up the middle here by uh, Wilson, fighting on his feet over the 30, or Dupree rather. Lose one tackler, but he's halted at the 31. Oklahoma with two minutes and 18, uh, eight seconds to go. They need two touchdowns to get back even. Some of the fans beginning to file out here at Owen Field. Well, don't worry about the Sooners. They're going to be back to win their eight, nine, or ten ball games. But they were outplayed here in the opener today by West Virginia. Mountaineers now in that 5-2 defense, and that's what Don Needle likes to play. They're doubling up on the wide receivers. They got a new uh, quarterback in there. Nope, that's still Kelly Phelps, and he's being sacked. Phelps thrown inside the 20-yard line. West Virginia can just tee off now. That was Rich Walter again. Uh, uh, well, he has been something. I'll tell you something. We've called that guy's name so many times, Rich Walters. 6'1", 230, just a junior. There's a story on West Virginia's scoring drive. We saw an outstanding draw. They've only been able to run two running plays here today, the sprint draw and the regular draw, and uh, got one in the end zone on the ground. Here's a draw play now as they give it off to Sims. Sims over the 25 to 27. That'll run the clock down to about a minute and 15. It's now 122. Jimmy, you tell me the last time you've seen somebody put 41 on the board against Oklahoma because one of the great things about your wishbone coaches, Barry Switzer, Pat Dye, Bear Bryant, is that they play great defense. They play great run defense. And today, they just got eaten up alive in that secondary. They didn't get to particularly damaged by the running game. In fact, it'd be interesting to see the final stats. Well, Don Nealon can have plenty of reason to be excited and happy about this one. It appears now that it's in the bag. Uh, of course, he doesn't feel that way. Uh, you Coaches never feel never, that way until it's feel, posted. Until it feels safe till it's in the newspaper. But West Virginia's got a 14-point lead with a minute 18 to go. Well, the last well, there's Barry Switzer, and there's the, the reaction over there, Jimmy. Colorado scored 42 points against Oklahoma in 1976. So that was Bill answer. Mallory, a good friend of Don Nealon's, got it uh, done that year. But it doesn't happen very often. 
Well, you got to give credit. Uh, I know a lot of people in this stadium are disappointed in the Sooner performance, but you got to give credit to what Don Nealon did today, particularly with that uh, even defense. Came in, knew he had to throw to win. He wasn't going to run the ball and win, but he used enough running to slow him down with the draw. Yeah. A lot of them are going home. They'll be heading back to Oklahoma City. It was 1968 that it was Notre Dame that defeated uh, Oklahoma 45 21. That was the opening game. But it's been a long time since they lost one here. There's a tipped pass caught by Cluis. Complete up over the 40 yard line, but short of the first down. Once, it, once again, Barry Switzer said before the ball game, Don Nealon has done a great job with this program. He better be leery. All right, here's another look. It's Kelly Phelps, who's thrown much more than Oklahoma would like to have thrown today. Throws a little crossing pattern. There's the tip play. You work on that every day. And the reception by number 82. I don't think that's intentional, Irv. No one. Just happened. Going for the first down. It's Wilson. He's got the first down. And then he is slammed down to 50. First down for Oklahoma. Now less than a minute to go. 50 seconds to go. They'll go without a huddle. The last time that Oklahoma lost its opening game, 68, they went on and finished up, went to a bowl game. They beat Oklahoma, beat Nebraska that year, 47 nothing, and then went on, defeated a lost to SMU by a point in the Astro Blue Bonnet Bowl. But it's rare what they be the first opening loss ever for Barry Switzer. The home run throw now by Barry Kelly, an offensive interference will be called against Clues of Oklahoma. I don't think there's any question about that. Uh, the official on that side, Tom Finken from Arvada, Colorado, throws the flag, and it looked like Oklahoma definitely pushed off. Armstead had it measured all the way, number 24. Yeah. Uh, watch Vance Carlson, interference against the uh, passing team. So that'll be a penalty back from the line of scrimmage. Clock shows 32 seconds to go. Well, Oklahoma continued its scoring string here today. 180 consecutive games, but their long string of uh, winning opening games is over. It would appear for certain. First opening game loss ever for Barry Switzer coached Oklahoma team. And the Sooners will have to go back to the drawing board because they face a most difficult schedule. Kentucky next week, then they come back with Southern Cal, lying ahead, Texas, That's Oklahoma uh, State, Missouri, Nebraska. Here's uh, Kelly Phelps finally being sacked for a long loss back around the 30. Jimmy, you point out next week, uh, that's Kentucky. Jerry Claiborne usually does a pretty good job defensing the wishbone, so there is a lot of work to be done by OU. All right, 14 seconds. Now this will be the last one. Last uh, play of the game probably you've already seen. Oklahoma might get off one more. Three seconds, two, one. And here goes, this is the last play. Kelly Phelps to the sidelines, incomplete. Time is over. West Virginia has pulled a stunning upset of the opening uh, weekend of college football. No question, they have knocked over one of the Giants. The Oklahoma Sooners of Barry Switzer will be back in a moment, but here's the big news, the final, West Virginia 34, 41, Oklahoma 27. And so the gathering gloom around the Orange Field and Memorial Stadium in Norman, Oklahoma. But what a happy moment it's been for Don Nealon and his West Virginia Mountaineers. By far the most outstanding victory in young Nealon's coaching life and career came here today as he upended one of the great uh, teams of college football over the past few decades, the Oklahoma Sooners. Look at that, Irv. Well, a lot of people uh, do not know what this guy look like, looks like, I should say. They will now because he got a great performance from Hostetler. Don Nealon, as you pointed out, the biggest victory of his coaching career. And it was Jeff Hostetler to a bevy of receivers that did it through the air and riddled and punished the Oklahoma defense to do it. The final score was West Virginia 41, Oklahoma 27. This is Jim Thackerberg Brown saying goodbye from Norman. Thank you.